what's real, what's real, what's real, tell me what's real, what's real, what's real, what's real, tell me, tell me what's real, what's real, what's real, what's real, tell me what's real, what's real, what's real, what's real, what's real. Nothing new under the sun. That's real. Can't hide from me. You can't run. No. Look in the mirror, see what you become. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the next question. What's real? What's real? What's real? What's real? Tell me what's real. What's real? What's real? What's real? What's real? Come here, son. Pay attention and listen. There be many men only seeking attention. Vain, glorious, losing sight of the mission. Fame themselves just, but you'll know they works are they witness. Uh, and they hearts are deceitful. Covetous men, yeah, they masking all the evil for the love of money. They'll destroy their own people, yeah, they vision cloudy because their minds is led by the eagle. Uh, Christ is the rock and foundation to build on. And he that hath an ear, let him understand. Fiery darts pierce the foolish man with no shield on. By his walk, you see his house was built upon the sand. Uh, doing the works of their father. They mind swept and guarded, so is Satan who they follow. So worried about their reputation, they soul becoming hollow. Never confessing they faults because the pride they can't swallow. Uh, and all they needed was repentance. It's okay if you fall. He sent the son for your forgiveness. Yeah, we die daily trying to make it to the entrance. Just stay up on the path and keep them laws in your remembrance. Uh, and be real with yourself. Uh, walk it the right, move them lies to the left Find the favor in his sight So you get eternal life Is the plight for every Hebrew that's enduring In this fight, that's real Cause nothing new under the sun That's real You can't hide from it, you can't run no. Look in the mirror and see what you become yeah. Yeah. Then answer this question Tell me what's real What's real What's real Tell me what's real What's real What's real, what's real? Tell me what's real. Daniel wrote a confusion of faces. It's hard to tell who real when brothers is moving with fakeness. The sanctuary's supposed to be like a happy oasis. But it ain't safe when snakes is in them holy places. Masquerading your true intentions is so amazing. Man pleasing through conversation, your works is wasted. Backpacks and accolades, you love the praises. Now your works is dead, your ego was your foundation. Mm. We supposed to build on the holiest rock. That's Jesus Christ, anything else is coming or not. This an army, if you fall, someone taking your spot. You only cared about your name, now it's taking a blot. Damn, you should have focused on the mission. Drowned in ambition, only working for position. When your rank was put in question, started stirring up division. Slandering the leadership to anybody who would listen. Mm. And I told you, you made that mistake. But in your pride, you couldn't see what I was trying to say. To climb in power, you would throw your own brother some shade. To think about it, you the only one stood in your way. See, brothers, you ain't gotta lie just to kick it. Show us what you lack and we'll show you how to fix it. Love with dissimulation is only for the wicked, but it ain't too late. Just ask the Lord for forgiveness. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real.
And that's not on, it's not on. We ready? We ready? Israel, are you ready? Say in the spirit. Check, 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 check. Christ bless Israel. Shalom. Salute down. Face Jerusalem. Oh, send a curse on the ADL, please. Do us a favor. Men Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Psalm 2. Psalms chapter 17 and verse 1. Hear the right hand, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and, and, and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, and thou that saveth by thy right hand. Them which put their trust in thee, from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Hide me under thy shadow of thy wings. For the wicked that oppress me from my, from my deadly enemies who compass me about. Heavenly Father, the God of our father Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Yahweh, we come to in the name of you, son, Jesus the Christ, Father God, on your Sabbath day. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for another Sabbath. We thank you, Father God, for the unity of the brotherhood. We thank you, Father God, for providing a place, Father God, that we can come to worship thee in the spirit of your son, Jesus Christ. Father God, we pray for the destruction of our enemies. We pray, Father God, you destroy the ADL. You destroy the Colonel Mission. You destroy APAC. Any, anybody, Father God, who come contrary to your people, Father God, we ask you to destroy them. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Father God, we curse each and every one of them especially the ADL. May you curse them, may you destroy them that they may never rise up again. Let them know, Father God, there is Israel, there is God in Israel. There is a God in Israel. Father God, you are our only weapon. Father God, give us the spirit to depend on you, you only, Father God, especially in these last days, Father God. As they're coming off against you, Father God, you are the only one we have, Father God. Father God, don't forget the promise you made to our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You say when we come back, when we repent, Father God, you will answer our prayers and will you fight for us. We pray, Lord, you fight for us. Destroy them, Father God. We pray for those in the midst of us who are sick. May you heal them swiftly and quickly, Father God. We pray for all Israel that are scattered in the forefront of the earth, Father God. We pray, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for continuing using IUSC for thy glory. Let everybody say hallelujah. 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 Father God, we also pray, Father God, the word bishop about to go out, Father God, we pray a brother may use it to become a better leader, a better husband, a better father, a better servant. We pray the sisters may use it to be a better wife, a better mother. Let your word go out, Father God, that he may bless Israel, that we may use it, Father God, to build a nation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for putting your spirit on the men, on the leaders of IUAC, Father God. Continue to bring your word forth, Father God. We also pray, Father God, you bless our food and a strong drink. It's in the name of you, Son Jesus Christ, give you praise of glory. Amen. Amen. Men Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Oh, thank Christ. Bless. Salute. Damn. Face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Oh, thank Christ. Bless.
Thank you. Deke, say something clever. Shalom, 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 Israel. Welcome back, welcome back. Oh, praise. Israel, what time it is? We where? Oh, praise. Shout out, shout out to the bishops, the deacon. Shout out to all of your brothers. Bishop's about to bring, you know, Bishop about to bring the fire. He said this is supposed to be a regular class. Yeah, it's right. A regular class. Yeah. That's what he said. You know, it's not nothing regular with Bishop. So, brothers, you know what to do. Get your pen, paper, your Bible, your back offer. Take good notes. Write the precept right. Write the precept right. Or you're going to be confused. All right? Take good note. You ready, Bishop? Yes, sir. Hey, Alicia, where's the other thumbnail? I don't, that one with my head exploding. I don't like that. You give the ADL uh, 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 an idea. You want to see the other thumbnail? They already hate us. Let me see the other one. I like the little the one on the left there. Let me see it, Alicia. You don't have it? Okay. Dang, they got, look at that. Skeletons. Let me see what the other one looked like. Yeah, I don't know what's up with Captain OC. These are your weird thumbnails. Where is it? Should be at the very top. Come on, y'all. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I like that one. Put that one up. This, so the, na the name of today's class is Resur Resurrection of the Walking Dead. Now that seems like a strange title. Why'd I name it that? Well, before I get into that, I want to open up with Russia. Give me the news uh, uh, clip on Russia. We're going to open up. I'm going to get to back to the resurrection of the walking dead in a minute. Let's open up with Russia. Yeah. Yeah. is reporting a shooting, some kind of shooting followed by an explosion occurred at uh, Crocus City. That's a major concert and events hall, a, a huge modern complex uh, in, on the outskirts of Moscow. People in camouflage, at least three of them, they burst into the ground floor of the Crocus City Hall during a concert and opened fire with automatic weapons. Most of the building is now engulfed in flames. This is a major attack, the roof of that place. Like, think Madison Square Garden, think, or, or, or think something much more modern even. Think, uh, you know, SoFi Stadium or something like that in Los Angeles. The roof has collapsed. That's what's going on in Moscow right now. And our foreign correspondent, Tom Sufi Burridge, has been uh, doing everything he can to get as much information as possible. Uh, he's there in London uh, as this has been breaking. So, Tom, the Russian Foreign Ministry is calling the incident a terrorist attack. What do we know? Yeah, multiple Russian officials, Kira, are calling this a terrorist attack now. It looks, just looks at this stage like one of the worst terror attacks in the last few years in the entire of Russia. I mean, this is a major complex with a concert ongoing. We know a Russian rock band was performing at the time. Uh, what we can say at this moment in time is that gunmen entered that complex within the last few hours uh, with automatic weapons. They opened fire. You can see the concert hall now uh, ablaze. This is a developing situation right now. The incident is not over by any means, uh, according to reports. I mean, there are lots of unconfirmed reports about casualty numbers. Uh, only official sources are saying about 18 people hospitalized at this stage, but that only seems to be part of the picture. Unconfirmed reports, and I stress unconfirmed reports, uh, suggest dozens killed or injured and potentially people still trapped in that building. We know the Russian uh, military or special forces are on the scene, and there are unconfirmed reports that hey, they are now trying to I've storm that a new console. video. Can you put that video up? You can end this one, put this new video up. Hopefully we won't get flagged. You might have to download it, it's like 20 seconds. It's not that long, but it shows what happens, what happened in this um, Russian, um, what Crocus City Coliseum, whatever it's called, which is similar to Madison Square Garden where you had a lot of people. And it opens up, they had some uh, footage there were some people that was using their cameras 
cell phone cameras to show what actually happened. Do we have it, Alicia? All right, if we can put that on the screen. We can put that on the screen. See the blood on the pole behind that lady? I can see that pole, see blood. Now look at them just shoot people. Cold bloody. Damn, damn, damn. Now, was that it? Okay, we can't end that, Alicia, because they'll find something to hit us with. So now, America says, oh, that was Hamas, that was ISIS. But then they, some people did some searching. Give me the next one from Instagram, Alicia. Let's see who, act, they said they, were, they caught four guys going into Ukraine. And Ukraine opened up the doors for them to come in. Now, let's see, watch this clip. I understand this is a Russian propaganda, but you have to be very careful because let me tell you, we're going to finish this war. We're going to win because we're stronger. After this, Russia will pay the price. Believe me, Russia will, Russia pay, will pay the, the price. price. Russia is supporting the enemies of Israel. Russia is supporting Nazi people who want to commit genocide on us. And just Russia will pay the price. Russia also. Now, let me listen to me very carefully. We are going to finish with these Nazis. We're going to win this war. It's going to take the time it's going to take, but we're going to win this war. Afterwards, we're not forgetting what you are doing. We're not forgetting. We will come. We will make sure that Ukraine wins. We will make sure that you pay the price for what you have done. You as Russia and you and as all the enemies of Israel and you as all the people who are now making everything they can to support genocide of the Jews in Israel. We are not forgetting. I think that it is important uh, that Russia pays the price. I don't know, I hope maybe war will end by then in victory for Ukraine. But if war has not ended uh, by, by the time we are finished our, with our own business, then I think that uh, Israeli weapons should find their way uh, to, uh, uh, to the Ukrainian army in such a way as uh, the Kremlin and its okay, regime thank you, Alicia. understands. So now we know or have an idea of who attacked Russia. It was not Hamas. It was not ISIS. It was not the Arabs. Now we have a general idea on who did it. But not that we really care. Things that's happening in the world is going to happen, according to prophecy. Right, give me the first pictorial history book. Read that. Who's reading for me? Officer Uzziah, Bishop. Pictorial history of... <laughs> okay. Uh, uh. Go ahead. Pictorial history of Israel, 20th anniversary edition by Jacob A. Rubin and Meyer Barkai. Now, when you go in the book, the first page, go into the book, read that. One, unto thy seed. Let's raise it up. It shows you the Israelites in Egypt. You see black people. Now, let's read the captions at the bottom. Raise it up a little bit. Read that. This mural depicting Israel's bondage in Egypt was found in the Theban tomb of Rechmeyer. Theban, Theban. Theban. Tomb of Rechmeyer, governor and vizier at the time of Thutmose III, about 1450 BCE. Mm -hmm. Read. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, and in brick, and in all manner of service in the field. So, Exodus 1, 13, 14. So again, now books like this is in the Jewish... So these books like this is in the Jewish Israeli section. Do not go to these book sections. Black Christians don't go to these book areas. So then you'll have somebody from the community. Not working? Hey, the mic is going in and out. So you'll sit, get somebody from the comedic community to argue with you about being Israelites, and they'll say there's no proof about Israelites then where is this history coming from? 
This was taken from the, the tomb of Retmir, governor of in Vizier, in the, during the time of Thutmose III, around 1450 BCE. So there is evidence of the Israelites existing. There is evidence of the Israelites being a black-skinned people. So what in the hell? That's what, I don't argue with the Kemetic community. To hell with them. Leave them dumb people alone. Be on the street arguing with these dummies. <clears throat> They're so busy with Martin Luther King Jr. and uh, Horace. <clears throat> the hell is this? <clears throat> Give me the next book during the Middle Ages, please. <clears throat> the image of the black in Western art. From the early Christian era to the age of discovery, from the demonic threat to the incarnation of sainthood. Edited by David Bindman, Henry Louis Gates Jr. So on the cover, you see one of the knights. Knights, let's go inside the book. Could you zoom in to the top left? Read that. Statue of St. Maurice, uh, 1240 to 1250. Magdenburg Cathedral of St. Maurice and St. Catherine Choir. Now, 1240 to 1250, that's St. Maurice. When you read up about him, he was the general. Don't zoom in, pull it back. I got to zoom up. Uh, he was a general over an army of black knights from Africa. They were all Israelites, all of them. So give me the next page. So this is a close-up on him. So on, in Hollywood, never shows black knights, rarely if ever. Give me the next one. So there ain't no maybe, you know, there was a fire and his skin got burned. He was really white. No, he's black. That's right. Give me the next page, please. Zoom into the writing on the right. Read that. 132, St. Maurice. Detail of the left wing of a carved altarpiece. 1450 to 1500. Uh -huh. Winehouse and Abbey chapter room. 133, St. Maurice. Detail of the left wing of a carved altarpiece. Dated 1492. The Litch Church of St. Peter's, St. Peter and Paul. 134, bust of St. Maurice. Lower compartment of the left wing of an altarpiece, 1430 to 1440, Titero Church. 135, St. Maurice, detail of the central panel of a carved altarpiece, 1430 to 1440, Wismar Church of St. Nicholas. Now, St. Maurice was a very famous knight, and these are images of him. Now, I don't think all of them are St. Maurice. I think they're just calling them that because there were many black knights that ruled Europe. Give me the next page. But I want you to see the artist. I want you to see the armor, the capes, the shields. Top right. Top left, I mean. Top left, I'm sorry. Yes. 145. Altarpiece of the high altar. Wings closed. Uh, late 15, early 16th century. Halley Church of St. Maurice. 146. St. Maurice statue from a niche in the central panel of, an, of the altarpiece of the high altar, figure 145, 1480 to 1490. All right, pull back. So look at that. A black man with golden armor, cape, shield. That's the stuff like that uh, inspires me when I see that. You know, your kids should look at that and, and, and have something to, you know, some greatness to look towards. Give me the next page. Uh, the top left in green. See it? Read that. 156, statue of St. Maurice from the facade of the town hall. Facade, facade. facade of the town hall in Judabog, 1508. Now read 157. 157, St. Maurice and his companions. Now notice it, St. Maurice and his companions, his friends, go ahead. Upper half of the right wing of a triptych from the chapel at Goss Whitfordson, 1520, Lundberg. Raise it up now, let's see the images. Now look at the top left picture. Let's zoom in on that left one. So that right there, you see a black man again in armor. Cape, I just love capes. You know. Now look at him, uh, St. Maurice and his companions. All black, do y'all see it? Oh, everybody in the painting is black. Even in the background, you see black men on horses back there. 
So when I tell y'all we were ruling Europe for a long time, I'm not lying. I ain't making stuff up. Y'all be like, nah, 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 you making stuff up. I ain't making nothing up. Roy, give me the next picture. picture. Give me the pink highlights, please. Start at the bottom left. Given the present state of our knowledge, it is very hard to find a place in this study for a series of decorated initials dating from the 12th century, in which the figures of partially or totally nude men with more or less clearly marked black characteristics form the stem of the capital letter P. No, remember that. Black characteristics form the stem of the capital letter P, okay? These initials appear in a group of manuscripts executed in northern France, and they include one common trait. They are all connected with St. Paul's epistles. So St. Paul's epistles, give me the next page. Wait, go back. Jump down to that top. I wanted that first sentence right there. Zoom in. Top sentence, that sentence right there. One of the most Negroid in appearance, if only because of the hair done in tight curls. So give me the next page. It shows you this letter P of St. Of Paul. You see the, see the P. And you see the letter A-U-L-U-S. That's Paulus. So Saint, this is a letter attributed to St. Paul. And notice the black man has a sword going through the head of a demon. Why would that be on the letters of St. Paul? Remember Paul wrote about the sword of the spirit. Now can we zoom in on the black man, St. Paul? Let's take a look at that. This has been attributed to St. Paul. Yes, the apostle St. Paul. All right. Now, give me the next book. Read that. Civil Rights, 1959. Hearings before the Subcommittee on Constitutional Rights of the Committee on the Judiciary United States Senate. So this is about civil rights, and it's in 19... Read the very bottom so y'all know what you're doing. 1959. 1959. Let's go into the book. American Negro Problems. Go ahead, read that. At the same time, the Negro question in the United States of America... So this is the Negro question in the United States of America. Go ahead. ...must be treated in its relations to the huge Negro masses of farmers mm. and workers oppressed and exploited by white imperialism in Africa and South America. So you got three groups. You got the Negroes in the United States... Then you got them in Africa and South America. Read on. The Negroes of the United States are the most advanced section of the Negro population of the world. Y'all better put some respect on it. Go ahead. <laughs> of the world and can play a decisive role in helping and leading the liberation movement of the Negro colonies. Mm. Can we get some bombs around here or something? Come on. <laughs> Within the Negro population of the United States, the Negro working class is destined to be the vanguard of all liberation movements. Y'all hear what they're saying? It's white, white folks don't care. That's right. Let me add again. The Negro within the Negro population of the United States, the Negro working class is destined to be the vanguard of all liberation movements and may become the vanguard of the liberation movement of the Negro peasant masses on an international scale. Mm, 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 that's some heavy stuff. Next page. The Negro question in the United States must be treated in its relation to the general international Negro problem. Just keep reading. We don't. The question of a Negro World Congress should be considered, but it can be realized only if a Negro working class leadership and the Congress can be secure. So we want to get Negroes in Congress like they got today. Coons, go ahead. One aim and purpose of the work among the Negroes in the USA should be to organize them as the champions of the Negroes all over the world. Against imperialism. Against imperialism. Against America's capitalism. Go ahead. A strong Negro movement in the USA will be able to influence and direct the Negro movement in all those backward parts of the world where the Negroes are oppressed by the various imperialist powers. So the white man knows that the black man in America is the threat. 
Everybody understand that? That's why they always got their foot on our neck. Everybody else can come from any country and do well and exceed. But the ones here, they might let one or two. If you can sing and dance, you might have a chance. But if you can't, they got their foot on your neck. So, give me... What, officer, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Officer Uzziah Bishop. Uzziah. Give me Baruch chapter 3. Let's open up now with some scriptures. Baruch chapter 3. All right, can, you can put the, Alicia, can you put the thumbnail back up? The good one. Not the one with my head exploded, not that one. I don't know what's wrong with Captain O.C. Put that back on the screen. So now we're going to get to the nitty gritty of the resurrection of the walking dead. Now, Baruch chapter 3, verse 4. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 4. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel. Hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. Hear what the Bible's calling us? The dead. We are the walking dead. Read it again. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites mm. and of their children. And of their children. Go ahead. Which have sinned before thee mm -hmm. and not hearkened unto the voice of thee, their God. For the which cause these plagues cleave unto us. Jump to verse 8, please. Verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So the dead Israelites are yet this day in our captivity. Go ahead. Where thou hast scattered us mm -hmm. for reproach. For reproach. They call us nigger, nigger, pumpkin eaters, stuff like that. Go ahead. And a curse. We're here as a curse. Go ahead. And to be subject to payments. Now we know why we're subject to payments. We mad, we hate to pay bills. But we're here as a curse because of breaking God's laws. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. According to all the iniquities of our fathers. Think about it. We're subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers. For example, remember the tithe. 10% was meant to go to the Levites. A portion of that was used for orphans and widows and strangers. If y'all remember, y'all remember that, right? When you read, was it Deuteronomy 14? Thank you. It gives you all that. We didn't want to pay that. So now here we are in captivity. Read it again. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers. You didn't want to pay the 10% tithe to the Levites? You didn't want to take care of the orphans? The fatherless, the widows, the strangers, now you got to pay that white man. Tax, cell phone bill, water bill, gas, electricity, child support. Oh, I got to pay that because we didn't want to do what was right according to God Almighty. So now we're subject to payment with our bottom big black lips stuck out, all pissed off. Don't get mad at God, get mad at you. Read on. Which departed from the Lord our God. Give me chapter 4, verse 1. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. The law of God endureth forever. Come on. All they that keep it shall come to life. Now remember, we just read it called us what? Dead. The dead Israelites. So now here it says, read it again, read it again. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, uh -huh. but such as leave it shall die. Now, that sounds strange. It already called us dead, but then it says, if we don't keep the law, we shall die. But such as leave it shall die. This Now, everybody on the planet dies at one point. So the die it's talking about here is the die in John, give me John 5, verse uh, 20, 29, please. What kind of die is this? John chapter 5 and verse 28. Because everybody dies. Right. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. All that are in the graves, meaning we're already dead, physically dead, shall hear the Lord's voice. Go ahead. And shall come forth, they that have done good, unto the resurrection of life. They that have done good, meaning kept his law. Unto the resurrection of life. Go ahead. And they that have done evil. And they that have done evil. Unto the resurrection of damnation. That's the die that Baruch was talking about. If you leave God's law, you shall die. It's talking about the resurrection of damnation. That's that lake of fire. 
that some Israelites don't even want to talk about it. They say, no, no, you could be an adulterer, drug addict. You'll, be, uh, you, you'll die and be born as a baby in the kingdom. You stupid as hell, you believe that. Christ is telling you about the resurrection of damnation. They're telling you, don't listen to that. You, no matter what you do, you'll die and go be born into the kingdom of heaven as a baby. Huh? You stupid as hell, you believe that? I could do, live my life as the devil on earth and get the kingdom? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't listen to these Israelites. Give me Proverbs 21, 16. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Now that, pro that precept right there goes back to, give me the first one, Baruch 3 and 4. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 4. O Lord Almighty, thou God of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites. This is us right here on the screen. We are the walking dead. When you look at our people, you got to see, we are some really insane people. Now, I didn't find, I couldn't find no pictures of the black woman. Not like, but there's some, I'm going to give an example. Not none of the black women in here. You ever see them over-exaggerated eyelashes? Uh, what else they got? The, the, the makeup that don't, that ain't even their complexion. <laughs> the, 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 the large, exaggerated weave. Uh, what they call it, culture, uh, culture appropriation. Yeah. You know how they get on the white, the, the white woman that wear braids and they say, that's culture appropriation. Then why you got that white woman's blonde, long hair weaver? That's culture appropriation too. That's right. Then they got the BBL. The big booty that's fake and some of them be dying from that. Bruh. And it be stinky down there. The big exaggerated breast that's like up here real big. They can't breastfeed nobody, no baby. All that comes from drag queens, by the way. I just want to put that out there. That comes from drag queens. Men who mock women. They haven't figured that out yet, that they're making fun of them. We want to look like that. Get those stupid eyelashes on your eyes. And if the homosexuals go, look at, his, look at his hole over here. Look at his stupid ass. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead, put it on the screen. Look. They're mocking the black woman. But the black woman thinks this is glamorous. Because she has not got a spark, not all of them, talking about the ones that follow us, does not have a spark of intelligence to realize they're being mocked. Look at this. This is disgusting. But this is what black women pattern themselves after. These are men making fun of black women. Look at this. It's, it's gross. Just, I, a little vomit almost came up just now. What the hell is this? Go back to the zombie pictures, please. I mean, they are the zombies, but. <laughs> yeah, we are, the, our people are the walking dead. Just look at this. Our people are literally, why? Because the first mistake we did, we left God's law. So now we're spiritually dead. Give me Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies. And their dead bodies. Now this dead is not the dead of condemnation. This dead is the spiritual dead. The dead of Proverbs 21, 16. The dead of Baruch 3 and 4. That mental and spiritually dead man, dead woman. Read again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is Babylon the Great, the United States of America. Go ahead. Which spiritually is... See that? That's the key. Which spiritually is called Sodom. Is This place is called Sodom. Put the drag queen back on the screen. Put him back. This is why it's spiritually called Sodom. They make gay rights. Go ahead. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. And Egypt. You got a dollar bill, Alicia? Put it on the screen. Mm -mm -mm. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make, they got a, a daggone, what was that RuPaul had a show? Yeah, this is spiritually called Egypt. I knew it coeptus. Our enterprise success. Give me the other one. I want the other one. Go back. Yeah, this one. I want the pyramid. You got the eye of I always forget who's the eye of Horus or I forgot. What was it? 
Ra, thank you. It's 1776 at the bottom. Novus Ordo Seclorum, New, New Order Seclorum, Novus New Ordo, Order Seclorum, World or Secular. This is the spiritual Egypt. They know that. So read again. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, mm -hmm. where also our Lord was crucified. Now, he wasn't crucified. Christ wasn't crucified here in Babylon, but spiritually he was. They crucified his image and his teachings. His image and his teachings were crucified here. Everybody understand that? Give me um, uh, Hosea. Hosea. The way I want to go? Six. Hosea chapter six. Pay attention. Right? What verse, Bishop? Uh, one, I'm sorry. Hosea chapter six and verse one. Mm -hmm. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn. And he will heal us. He hath smitten, and will and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. Stop. After two days will he revive us. Give me that one in uh, Peter three and eight, please. Hold that. Hold Hosea. Give me. Is it First Peter three and eight? Just popped in my mind. I need this. Second, Second Peter three and eight. Second Peter. Thank you. Second Peter chapter three and verse eight. Listen good. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Don't be ignorant of this thing, God. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years, read. And a thousand years as one day. And a thousand years as one day. Now let's go back to Hosea chapter 6 verse 1. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Let's return unto the Lord. For uh -huh. he had torn. And he will heal us. When it says he have torn, that means he made us go into slavery. He destroyed us as a people. He tore our tribes down, our nation down. So he have torn and he will what? Will heal us. He promised he will heal us. Go ahead. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. He hath smitten. We went into captivity, but he promised to bind us up. Go ahead. After two days. After two days. Them two days represent 2,000 years. So notice the, the wording. After two days, go ahead. Will he revive us? So after two days, will he revive us? So two days have passed. So what day is it talking about? The third day. Read that part again. After two days. After two days, 2,000 years have passed. Go ahead. Will he revive us? Will he revive us? Go ahead. In the third day. In the third day. This, this is still talking about the third day. He will raise us up. He will raise us up. Right? And we shall live in his sight. And we shall live in his sight. So right now, brothers and sisters, we are in the, the third day. We are in the third. Does everybody understand that? Yes, mm -hmm. Give me John 2 and 19. <clears throat> John chapter 2 and verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. You hear what he said? He said, destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. Go ahead. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building, and will thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. Now, this is some heavy stuff here. He said he's going to raise this up, his body up in three days, but it was a dual meaning. Not only is he talking about his body, he's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what Hosea prophesied about in Hosea 6, 1 and 2. We just read it. Everybody with me? Yes, give me, give me Isaiah 26. Watch this. Isaiah 26, 19. We're going to start right there. Isaiah. I need, you, I need you to pay attention. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 19. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise. Do you hear what he said right now? Do you hear what he said right there? Read it again, read it again. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they rise. So when Christ talked about resurrecting his body, he was talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. That's, That's what right. Isaiah revealed. That's what Isaiah is revealing. Read it again. Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Come on. Awake and sing. 
ye that dwell in dust. Mm -hmm. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. That's right. Come on. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Now the chambers is the chariots. Enter thou into thy chambers. Go ahead. And shut thy doors. Here's the proof. And shut thy doors. About thee. About thee. Watch this. Why are we going to be in the chariots? Watch this. Hide thyself, as it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. That's destruction. Give me that. Hey, Revelation 11 and 12. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, mm -hmm. Come up hither. Come up hither. This is the chariots. Come on. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. And he ascended us from, put it on the screen. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, a chariot. Go ahead. And their enemies beheld them. And our enemies beheld us. Do y'all see that thing right there? Now, we going to go to 1 Corinthians. I know it's Corinthians, but I like saying Corinthians. We go into 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, uh -huh. by which also ye are saved. That's right. If ye keep in memory, if ye keep in memory, what I preached unto you, what I preached unto you, what I prophesied unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, unless you have believed in vain. So brothers, sisters, we got to keep in memory what has been preached, what has been prophesied. Because if not, your belief is in vain. You're wasting your time here. Go back to T.D. Jakes. Go back to uh, um, the fruit of Islam, wherever you came from. Just go back. Go ahead. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So that's the main thing to keep in memory, that Christ died for our sins. Read. And that he was buried, and that he rose again. Hey, do me a favor, Alicia. Can you put where he was buried? Give me the first picture. Right, put it on the screen. So read that again. And that he was buried. And that he was buried. Pause right there. Give me the next picture, Alicia. I gave you a bunch. Do y'all see how he was buried, right? Y'all see this? Hey, give me the precept in Matthew 27, 62. Alicia, pause right there. Matthew 27, 62. We're going to talk about Christ's burial for a moment. Matthew 27 and 62. I hope I wrote it down right. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 62. Mm -hmm. Now the next day that followed the day of, pre of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Listen good. Saying, sir, we remember that that deceiver they said. They called Christ a deceiver. Yeah. I want you all to understand that he called Christ a liar. Right. That deceiver said what? While he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Go ahead. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure that the sepulchre that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, uh -huh. lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Mm -hmm. Pilate said unto them, ye have a watch. You have a watch of Romans, a watch of is a God of Romans. Go ahead. Go your way. Make it as sure as ye can. Watch this. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. So they got a stone in front of the sepulchre, in front of the doorway where Christ was buried. And they set Roman guards there. Give me the next image. So it wasn't no little stone. You needed men to move this stone. Everybody with me? Was that it, Elisha, for the Romans? Okay, show them. You ain't got to go fast. Let it, I want this to marinate because we ain't seen images like this. You're looking for passion of the daggone whatever. <laughs> that was it? Okay. So now, go back to Matthew, I mean, 1 Corinthians 15 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 4. Uh -huh. And that he was buried. Uh -huh. And that he was buried. And that he arose again. What, what, what? And that he arose again. Go ahead. The third day. The third day. Now, Matthew 28. Matthew 
chapter 28 and verse 1. Uh -huh. yeah. Watch this. Listen good. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. So now you got to imagine. They come to the sepulcher and there's a great earthquake. Go ahead. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven. Put it on the screen. Go ahead. And came and rolled back the stone. And, and the angel came and rolled back the stone. Give me the next one, Alicia. Come on, pay attention. Go ahead. And came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And then he sat on a stone. Go ahead. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. So the Roman watch, they became as dead men and fled. This one angel came and moved the stone when it took a whole watch of Romans to put the stone there. One black angel with big black feet and big black lips moved the daggone huge stone. That's right. What the hell is going on here? Was that it, Alicia? So read it again, read it again. And for fear no, no, go back to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, uh -huh. according to the scriptures. Give me the give me the next one, Alicia, next image. He rose again in the tomb. When the angel came, Christ woke up from the dead. Give me the next one, Alicia. Come on, pay attention. Come on. Give me the next one. And the man walked out the sepulcher. Y'all see this? Give me the next one, Alicia. Come on, man. Come on, man. Go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Uh-huh. And that he was seen of Cephas. He was seen of Peter. Then of the twelve. Then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once. They were, give me the next one. There were five hundred witnesses that saw Christ with their own eyes. So when people say nobody's seen Jesus, what the hell are they talking about? They said over five, there were five hundred people that saw him at the same time. That's what you're seeing right there on the screen. 500 people at once saw him. And you got Christians about no, nobody seen Jesus. Huh? Nobody seen Yahshua. Nobody seen Yahweh Shai. What the hell are you talking about? Come on now, dog. Come on now, dog. <laughs> what verse you just read? Uh, verse, in verse 6, sir. Read 6 again. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. At once. Go ahead. Of whom the greater part remain unto this present. So when Paul had wrote the letter, he said the greater part of them are still alive. Go ahead. But some are fallen asleep. But some have died. Go ahead. After that, he was seen of James. Mm -hmm. Then of all the apostles. Mm -hmm. And last of all, he was seen of me also. Wait, wait, wait. Paul said last of all. He, he was, was seen of me. Oh, give me Acts 9. Let's, let's read about that. Acts yeah. 9. Of course, Paul said he saw Christ. People don't believe it, but he said, I saw him last. Right. Give me that in Acts 9. Let's start at verse 1. Acts chapter 9 and verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, mm. went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So Rome gave the high priest authority to put bounties on the heads of the followers of Christ. Paul was one of many bounty hunters. Go ahead. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying... Put on the screen, Alicia. Come on. He fell to the earth and what? And heard a voice saying mm. unto him... Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You're going to hurt yourself. Go ahead. And he, and he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? 
And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Go ahead. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. So he was blind. Go ahead. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Read. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and had seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. We heard about this guy named Saul, go ahead. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. And so that Gentiles are the scattered Israelites, northern kingdom, go ahead. And kings uh -huh. and the children of Israel. That's southern kingdom. So go back now. First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Chapter 15. Chapter 15. Excuse me. Chapter 15 and verse 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also. As of one born out of due time. Okay. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So Paul said he's the least of the apostles. The least. He said that he's not even good enough to be called an apostle because he persecuted the church of God. Give me Galatians 1. Galatians chapter 1. In verse 11 and 12. Galatians. Like Paul says. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 11. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So from the time that Christ knocked him down, Christ was dealing with him and teaching him. Everybody understand that? So Peter didn't teach Paul. None of the other apostles taught Paul. Christ himself taught the Apostle Paul. That's right. Everybody understand that? So when you go back to 1 Corinthians 15 again, and you were in verse 89 again, read that again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. Mm -hmm. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Mm -hmm. But... By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with the, Excuse me. I want you to understand what he's saying in that verse. The grace that was given to Paul, the mercy for all the murders he committed, that he allowed to happen. It says, his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Notice the next part. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Paul did more work than all the other apostles. That's right. That's why most of the New Testament are the writings of Paul. Why? Because he was trying to make up for all the SH he did. That's the mentality we got to have. I know a lot of y'all two goody two shoes and angels and y'all know sinless people in here You're okay you lie to yourself okay what verse was that uh in verse 10 sir read yet not i but the grace of god which was with me mm -hmm. therefore whether it were i or they so we preach and so ye believe that's right now if christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead now i want y'all to see that in the church of Corinth, you had some brothers sitting among them saying, hey, there's no resurrection of the dead. There's no resurrection. These are Negroes sitting in there, just sitting there waiting to bring out. Give me that in 1 Corinthians, was it 11? 
Is it 11 or uh, 9 about heresy? Coming up with a new dot, and they just sit back and wait for the right time. When can I bring this out? Let me just wait because I see things leadership don't see. I got a deeper understanding. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8, 19. For there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Now give me Acts 20. That's the one I really wanted. And verse 30. Start at 29. Acts chapter 20 and verse 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So now in the church of Corinth, you had men saying that there is no resurrection. Give me Acts 23, 8. Let's see where they got that from. Go ahead, put it on the screen. Acts chapter 23 and verse 8. Yeah, yeah, I see, see the nigga right there? See, I got deep understanding in them. Ain't no resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. Read it again. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. Mm -hmm. Neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. So it's obvious that these men at Corinth got influenced by the Sadducees. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15, that verse you was at. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? So again, the Sadducees used to teach that. There's no, no resurrection of the dead. So these, some of these dudes in Corinth got influenced by that doctrine. And they started to spread it in the church of Corinth. Everybody with me so far? All right, read on. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. If there's no resurrection of the dead, then that means Christ did not rise. Go ahead. And if Christ be not risen... Then is our preaching in vain. And if Christ did not rise, then we wasting our time preaching. Go ahead. And your faith is also vain. And your faith, you in here but saying you believe, you're wasting your time. This is all a waste of time, he's saying. If Christ didn't rise from the dead, read. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. See that? And all of us are a bunch of false witnesses of God. Go ahead. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, mm -hmm. excuse me, raised up Christ, right? whom he raised not up, mm -hmm. if so be that the dead rise not. If so be that the dead don't rise. Go ahead. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised? So he says it again. If the dead don't rise, then the, is Christ not raised? Christ, he never rose. That's all a big hoax. It's a lie. Go ahead. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. And if Christ didn't raise from the dead, you're still in your sins. Everybody understand that? Because you still got to go get, you got to get a goat, got to get a lamb, you got to get a bull, get a turtle dove, you still got to do that. You're still in your sins. Go ahead. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. And them brothers and sisters that already died in the body, read it again. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. They're just dead. There's no resurrection for them. They're just dead. dead. Go ahead. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. So if in this life we have hope in Christ, only have hope in Christ, of all men on the planet, we're the most miserable. Why is he saying that? Because everybody else is having fun living their life, and we're trying to live a life of uh, discipline, of abstinence from sin. And everybody else is living their life having fun. Verse 20. But now is Christ risen from the dead. Let's give me the next images again. The same ones. Read it again. I'm sorry. But now is Christ risen from the dead. But now Paul comes back. He says, but now is Christ risen from the dead. And become the first fruits of them that sleep. And he's that the first fruits of them that sleep in death. That's right. Okay, he is the first fruit of the resurrected. Everybody understand that? Verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. He's talking about Adam and Christ, go ahead. For as in Adam all die. So 22 is explaining 21. Read 21 and 22 together. Verse 21. For since by man came death, 
By man came also the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Mm -hmm. But every man in his own order. But every man in his own order. See, there ain't going to be no chaos during resurrection. It's not going to be no black confusion like we like to do. Every man will be in his proper order. That lets you there ain't going to be no equality. Everybody understand that? There will be no, we all going to be ruling over the nations, but everyone's going to have their proper order. Ain't going to be no, oh, no, I'm not, we all the same. No, 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 they ain't what it's saying. And we're going to love it. Read that again. I'm sorry, what verse was that? Verse 23. Uh-huh. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Hey, I'm going to show you that. Give me Matthew uh, 19, 28. Order. Matthew chapter 19 and wait, verse... Wait, wait, wait. Let me get it. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So the twelve is going to be the top guns in the kingdom. That's right. Ain't going to be no equality with them. Oh, I'm equal to Peter and John. No, you're not. No, we're not. Those will be the top men. Everybody understand that? It's going to be a, a government under Christ, and it's going to be order. Revelation 7 and 4, please. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So this hundred and forty-four thousand, the twelve is, is among them, but they're the top of the one forty-four. Everybody got that, right? Jump down to verse nine. Verse nine. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb. Now these are the rest of the Israelites, other men of Israel, other women of Israel. That's that great multitude coming from uh, worldwide. Everybody understand that? Give me Isaiah 9 and 7. Start at 6. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Because I said Christ is going to set up a government. The Christian church don't understand that thing. Go ahead. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Go ahead. And his name shall be called Wonderful, mm -hmm. Counselor, mm -hmm. the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's right. Those are all the titles that Christ got. Go ahead. Of the increase of his government. Of the increase of his government. Go ahead. And peace. There shall be no end mm -hmm. right. upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it. To what? To order That's it. That's why I said everybody going to be in order. Ain't going to be no confusion. Go ahead. And to establish it with judgment mm -hmm. and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hey, you know what I want now? Give me the one in wisdom of Solomon. Go on. Somebody help me out here. Where Solomon in the spirit is speaking of himself, but also as Christ. Where he says, the nation shall be subject unto me. Where's that one at? Mm, somebody find me that? Oh, uh, chapter 8. 8 and 14, sir. Uh, let's start at, uh, yes, 8, 14. Yes, 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 yes. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 14. Now, this is Solomon, but it's also mainly talking about Christ when the kingdom is set up. Watch this. I shall set the people in order. Read it again. I shall set the people in order. One more time. I shall set the people in order. Ain't going to be no black confusion. Christ said, I'm going to set the people in order. That's and that's right. another thing. Don't worry about the tribe so much. Some of y'all be strong. I don't know who my daddy is. I don't know if I'm this strong. Don't worry about that. Christ said, I'm going to set the people in order. Yeah. What if you got it wrong? What if that brother's not Benjamin? What if he's Judah? Well, if we're wrong, guess who's going to set it in order? Christ is going to set it in order. The king of kings will set everything in order. So what you mad for? What the hell is this? I don't know what's wrong with people. Read it again. I shall set the people in order 
And the nations shall be subject unto me. And all the nations shall be subject unto Christ, Son of God. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I think we was in what, verse 24? Uh, verse 23. 23? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Mm -hmm. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. So then cometh the end, when he, when Christ shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Read. Even the Father. So then comes the end when Christ shall deliver the kingdom to the heavenly Father. So that's order. I'm, I'm sure this is order. And Christ is letting you know, although I created you, there's one above me. Y'all understand that? Read it again. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, excuse me, delivered up the kingdom to God. Even the Father, mm -hmm. when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. So Christ first got to put down all rule and all authority and power. I mean, he got to destroy nations first. Before the kingdom is delivered to the Father, Christ said, I got to destroy these nations. I got to subdue them. Go ahead. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Y'all see, read it again. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Christ must reign until all enemies are put under his feet. Now, watch this. Give me um, what I want. Isaiah 34. Just want to show you something. Start at 1. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 1. Remember what we just read. Don't forget the thought. Christ must reign. So they have put all enemies under his feet. Go ahead. Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that, that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. The indignation of the Lord is upon how many nations? Upon all nations. That's right, come on. And his fury upon all their armies. That's right. He hath utterly destroyed them. Mm. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Mm. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. Damn. And the mountain shall be melted with their blood, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it right there. Hope the heavens rolled together as a scroll. That's that mushroom cloud effect. Go ahead. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine. That's their missiles, their satellites, whatever Esau, the nations got going through the sky through space, it's going to come down. That's right. Read that part again. As the leaf falleth no, off. No, no, and all their hosts. And all their hosts shall fall down. As the leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. Come on. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Go ahead. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, mm. and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Can we look up, can we look up Idumia? Because Christians say Idumia was destroyed already. You yeah, put it on the screen. Read that. Idumia. Edomite. Mm. Of or relating to Edom or the Edomites. So the Edomites would be the ruling nations on earth that Christ is coming to destroy and bring to the slaughter. Everybody understand that? That's right. So these Christians don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's go back. Isaiah. Wait, wait. You know I want to go from there? Because it said Christ got to subdue everybody, right? Yes, sir. Give me Habakkuk. I just love Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3. I just love this thing right here. Make my teeth white. Habakkuk 3, we're going to start at verse 8. Hey, Alicia, I need to, I need to, yeah, put, yeah, that's I do me right there. Um, Habakkuk, what did I say go? Uh, 3 and 1. Habakkuk. Wait, wait, I'm slow. You know I can't find Habakkuk. Where is it? The hell? Oh, here we go. I found it. I got it. Go ahead. Habakkuk, chapter 3 and verse 1. Watch this. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shiginah. O Lord. I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Revive thy work in the midst of the years. Didn't we read something? Was it Baruch? Anybody remember he said revive us? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Where was it? Hosea 6 and 2. Let me hear it again. I, I want to hear it. It just popped. Soon as soon we just read it, it went boop. Is it Hosea 6 and 2? Come on, man. Yes, sir. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2. Watch. After two days. After 2,000 years. Will he revive us? Will he revive us? Who's the us? The Israelites. Go ahead. In the third day, he will raise us up. Uh, we're we, being raised up now. Go ahead. And we shall live in his sight. And we're going to get the kingdom. Now let's go right. on back to Habakkuk now. Habakkuk 3 and 2. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2. O oh Lord. I have heard thy speech and was afraid. Mm. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. So he's saying revive the Israelites in the midst of the years. Go ahead. In the midst of the years, make known. Mm -hmm. In wrath, remember mercy. That's right. Go ahead. God came from Teman. God came from Teman. This is Edom. Go ahead. And the Holy One from Mount Paran. Mm -hmm. Selah. That's right. His glory covered hey, them. Hey, hey, hey. Do me a favor, Alicia. I, there's a map we got of Teman. We use it, I use it at least five, six times. It's right there next to Israel. It's like, yep, that's it right there. Put it on the screen. I need y'all to see where World War III going to take place. Israel, can you zoom in on, on that whole section right there? I just want that whole section right there, Alicia. You zoom in. Y'all see Israel right there? You got Jerusalem up on top. You got Jordan, Bozra, that's teeming right there under it. That whole section is the land of Edom. Everybody see that? Now read that again in Habakkuk. Where was it? Verse 3. 3 and 3. 3 and 3. God came from Teman. God came from Teman. Y'all see Teman right there? Christ is coming from that area right there. So Habakkuk, you can take it down now, sees a vision of Christ decimating the nations in that area. Go ahead. And the Holy One from Mount Paran. Uh -huh. Selah. Selah means it's true. It's like saying amen. Go ahead. His glory covered the heavens, mm -hmm. and the earth was full of his praise. And the earth was full of his praise. Come on. And his brightness was as the light. Hey, give me that first one, Elisha, the first one. Yeah, put that on the screen. I like that. Look, remind me of Dragon Ball Z. I just like the cartoon. I'm going to read it again. And, and his, his brightness. And his brightness was as the light. Uh -huh. He had horns coming out of his hand. Now, in some of your Bibles, it'll say rays of light. You see these superhero movies where they go, Shazam! They got that from the Bible! That's right. So Habakkuk said when he saw Christ, there was power coming out of his hands. That's right. Man, come on, man. Read that thing, man. He had horns coming out of his hand, uh -huh. and there was the hiding of his power. Meaning he had to hold his power back. Remember, Christ created everything. He had to hide his power. He said, no, no, no I can't use everything. I'll destroy everything. I got a hole. I got to hide it. Come on. Before him went the pestilence. Before him went the pestilence. And burning coals went forth at his feet. And burning coal. Yeah, put in burning. Look at that. Burning coals was at his feet. There was nuclear devastation at the feet of the Son of God. Come on, man. Go ahead. He stood and measured the earth. Look at that. I want you to think about this. He stood, he measured the earth. How much power am I going to need to destroy this army, that army, that army, that army, that army? Hmm. He's doing measuring. Read it again. He stood and measured the earth. Mm -hmm. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. And drove asunder the nations. Go ahead. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. Meaning the, the kingdoms were scattered. Go ahead. The perpetual hills did bow. Meaning the smaller kingdoms bow. Go ahead. His ways are everlasting. His ways are everlasting. Watch this. I saw the tents of Kushan. Now the tents of Kushan is Ethiopia. Not all of Ethiopia. The Hamitic Ethiopians. Read it again. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction. Go put the map back up. Put the map back up. Put the map back up. Put the map. Put the map. I don't see. Yeah. Well. Ethiopia it was further down. You ain't got it on this map. It's down here, yeah, down there. All right, go back to the scriptures. Read again. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, uh -huh. and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. These are the sons and daughters that uh, Keturah had with Abraham. Uh, semi, like 
house, very similar to Arabs. They're not Ishmaelites. They are Midian. Go ahead. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Now, people read that and get confused about the term rivers. Give me Isaiah. Hold that. We're going to come back here. Isaiah 17, 12, and 13. Isaiah 17, 12, and 13. Isaiah chapter 17 and verse 12. Yeah. Woe to the multitude of many people, which make a noise like the noise of the seas, mm. and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of many waters. Yeah, see that right there? So these rivers, these waters represent nations. Hey, give me the one in Revelation. Is it 17? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Thank you. Verse 15. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 18. 15. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So everybody understand the, 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 the metaphor, the parable of regarding waters. It's talking about people, nations, kingdoms, and tongues. Let's go back. Verse 8. Habakkuk 3 and 8. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 8. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Yep, go ahead. Was thine anger against the rivers? Mm -hmm. Was thy wrath against the sea? Mm -hmm. That thou didst ride upon thine horses and thy chariots of salvation. Mm -hmm. Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes. So read. Even thy word. So thy bow is talking about the word of God. His bow is giving an example of bow and arrow, but it's representing a weapon, which is the Bible. Read that part again. Thy bow was made quite naked, mm -hmm. according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word. If you read the Bible, it tells you Christ is not coming back to give you gummy bears and hugs. He's coming back for devastation, destruction to destroy America, Russia, England, Japan, China, Saudi Arabia. All these nations going down, baby. They're all going down. That's right. That's right. Read it again. I love that thing. Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribe. The oaths of the tribe is the Bible, the word of God. Even thy word. Uh -huh. Eve is telling you right there. Even thy word. Go ahead. Selah. Selah meaning amen. Go ahead. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. Mm -hmm. The mountains. Meaning, he cleaved the earth with nations of people. Go ahead. The mountains saw thee, mm. and they tremble. The nations are going to tremble when they see the Lord. Go ahead. The overthrowing of the water passed by. Mm -hmm. The deep uttered his voice. That's right. And lifted up his hands on high. Mm -hmm. The sun and moon stood still. The sun and the moon going to stand still. Go ahead. In their habitation, mm -hmm. at the light of thine arrows, they went. At the light of their, that's the Lord's lightning and thunder, but there's going to be missiles there too. Go ahead. And at the hey, hey, give me some more pictures, Alicia. Come on, put them things back up. Look at the missiles. On, put on the screen. This is war. You got missiles flying around. Give me the next image, Alicia. Stop being slow. You got missiles flying all around. You got thunder. I'm telling y'all, it's going to be a bloody, bloody scene. Read it again. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows, they went. And at the shining of thy glittering spear, mm -hmm. thou didst march through the land in indignation. Indignation means righteous anger. Go ahead. Thou didst thrush the heathen in anger. He, thou didst beat the nations in anger. Go ahead. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Wait a minute. I thought this for everybody. Read it again. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. He, he ain't coming back to save everybody. He's only coming back to save the Israelites. Read it again. Thou wentest forth. For the salvation of thy people, mm -hmm. even for the salvation of thine anointed. And that's the elect of Israel. Go ahead. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. So the head is America. Hey, 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 hey Alicia, find me America on many waters. America that dwells on many waters. You know the map, Alicia. We're coming back to these pictures. Don't leave that thing. Don't let it go right there. Put it on the screen. This is them that dwell on many waters. You might think the only head America got is here in this country. This country, it tells you in Revelation 17, who's going to destroy this country here? Who? Nope. Got it wrong? Europe. NATO. But, hey, how many of y'all saw Olympus is falling? Uh, what's the other one? Uh, Angel. America got many heads. They got content. See, they're not like black people. 
When I'm going to tell you what, they, what I mean by that. Black people only live for the moment. America sits back and says, well, if they take us down here, we need another headquarters. A contingency plan. And if they take that one down, we're going to have one over here. And if they take that one down, we're going to have one over here. That's how they get down. That's the way leaders think. Only black people don't think like that. So America got bases all around the globe. So read the verse. Now go back to the pictures, Alicia, and read the verse again. Habakkuk chapter. Hold on, hold on. Deke going to say something. You guys never heard of don't put everything in one basket? That's what Bishop just Black showed you. Black people don't understand that. If you you think, explain it to them. You think all these chemical weapons America have, you think all of them is, is, is only in America? Are you serious? No. This is, again, again, this is what the war between Ukraine and Russia is about. That's, the, that's what the war is about. You got to know the history, why the war start. The war is Ukraine is in the backyard of Russia. America want Ukraine to join NATO so they can put what? Chemical weapon and Russia's why would you accept chemical weapon in your backyard? That's what the, in Russia tried to prevent that. Now they say Russia is evil. Russia. No, that's what they was about. All America chemical weapon is not in America. That's what Bishop is saying. Mm -hmm. They got uh, sec, they, what, you, what you just said? Contingency plan. They got contingency plan. Mm -hmm. So they try to put chemical weapon. You know what they say? Oh, we have chemical weapon in this country, but we didn't give them the code. Right. Please, you, you joking? That make no sense. So that's what Bishop just showing you. Exactly. So read that again. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Come on with the pictures now. Come on, y'all. Read it again. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, mm -hmm. even for salvation with thine anointing. That's right. Go ahead. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked. So the head is America. Although America as the country is taken down, they're going to have different heads. Different heads. And God said, I'm going to take them down. And that includes the beast with seven heads and ten horns. He said, I'm going to take all of them down. That's right. right. By discovering the foundation unto the neck. Meaning you, when you cut the head off at the neck, they finish. Go ahead. Selah. Mm. Amen. Th Go ahead. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. That's right. Watch this. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. The nations came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. So this is the nation bringing their missiles, ICBMs, their jets. All that they got is aimed at Christ. Read it again. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Mm -hmm. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Now he reveals something right there. He said their desire was to devour the Israelites secretly. Give me that in Psalms 37, 12, I think it is. I think. Psalm, is it? Somebody. Psalms 37, is it 12? Read that. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 12. The wicked plotteth against the just. See, they are. God is letting us know. They do have secret meetings about the Israelites, about our people. Y'all be sleeping on this. Don't sleep on this devil. Give me Psalm 64 and 2. Psalms. Excuse me. Psalms chapter 64 and verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Mm. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. So when we say that they have secret meetings about the Israelites, about our people as a whole, we're telling you the truth. We're telling you based on biblical scriptures. Everybody understand that? Let's go back. Let's go back. Habakkuk 3. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Come thou on, Alicia. Didst, thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Mm -hmm. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Watch this. Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, mm. through the heap of great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled. So... Habakkuk said, when I heard this, my belly trembled. He saw so much devastation, so much destruction, so much death, murder, annihilation. Read it again. When I heard, my belly trembled. Watch this. My lips quivered at the voice. You ever see people when they scared, their lips just quiver? Right, 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 right. Habakkuk said, my lips quivered when I heard the voice. Go ahead. Rottenness entered into my he bones. He felt like he was going to dot dead. Go ahead. And I trembled in myself mm. that I might rest in the day of trouble. He said, when Christ would come, when the Lord would come, I want to be at rest. I want to be dead. I don't want to see none of this. Go ahead. 
when he cometh up unto the people. Watch this, watch this. He will invade them with his troops. Hey, listen, give me the other picture. Give me the other one. I'm going to show you the one I like. Give me the other one. Give me the other one. Yeah, that one right there. Read it again. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. That's why America got Space Force X. These are, Trump said we need, so it started with Ronald Reagan first, started with Reagan. They said we need uh, spaceships of our own around the planet Earth. They said, why? Reagan said, you never know, might be some, uh, in, in, what's the word? Intergalactic uh, troubles we might encounter. Trump came now and said, we got to do that thing. Now they increase more funding. Now they got, oh, hey, can you find me Space Force X? Find me Space Force X. Y'all think I'm joking. You think that's out there for Russia? No, that's out there for the Lord. Y'all don't realize what day and time, what, that ain't it. That ain't it either. Space Force X or Space X. Come on, y'all. Let me see Space Force. Thank you. Yep, just put that on the screen. You can put the whole thing on the screen. Put the whole thing on the screen. That's it. United States. What was I just reading? Where was I just reading? I, I, I can't see it. Now you had it there, then y'all hit it right. United States Space Force. That was it right there. So this, they have a military branch for space. So now work. it's not just land, water, and air, and sea. Now it's space as well. Intergalactic space force. Y'all keep playing. So the Lord said, read that again. I just want to hear it again, verse 16, the bottom of verse 16. When he cometh up unto the people. That's, come on, Alicia, put it on the screen again. When he cometh up unto the people. He will invade them with his troops. Let me ask Alicia. Yes, thank you, Alicia. It's after the fact. But read it again, brother. Okay. Let's read it again. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. All righty. Let's go on back now. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, before we go back to 1 Corinthians, give me Revelation 19.11. I just like this one, too. Revelation. Chapter 19 and verse 11. Uh -huh. And I saw heaven open. And he saw heaven open. It's John speaking. And behold, a white horse. Mm -hmm. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. So now he's seeing the Lord. Go ahead. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Wait, wait, wait. So in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. That's the same. And give me that precept in Exodus 15, 3. Showing you it's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. So I say he ain't coming back to give out gummy bears and handshakes and kisses. Let's go on back. Revelation 19 again. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Now I told y'all. The same God you read about in the Old Testament is Christ the Son of God. It's the same one. This is why, give me John 1 and 1, please. Y'all got to, let's get our thoughts right. Y'all thought you was dealing with the Father. You thought we went on a mountain and spoke to the Heavenly Father. No, the Father we spoke with was Christ. Read that. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. Mm. And the Word was God. And the Word was God. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning of Genesis with God. Go ahead. All things were made by Him. All things were made by Him. And without Him. And without Him. Was not anything made that was made. Go ahead. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Jump down to verse 14, I think. I'm not looking at it. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh. And the word was made flesh. Go ahead. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. Who is that, brothers? Christ. That's Christ. Okay. Like I keep saying, the father we dealt with was Christ. Give me, go back to, you forgot already. I know you forgot. Go back to Isaiah 9. I know you forgot already. 
Isaiah 9. I forgot the verse because I ain't looking at it. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. This is Christ. Go ahead. Unto us a son is given. Mm, the son. Go ahead. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. The everlasting father. The what we the, see you going by it. That's the part we want. Read it again. The everlasting father. One more time. The everlasting father. One more time. The everlasting father. Christ is the everlasting father we dealt with. I'm telling you, he's the everlasting father we dealt with. That's why we, we, we I just I, I just gotta show you now. Give me, give me real quick. I gotta find it. Uh uh, okay, go on. If, somebody help me. Christ said, you have never seen the John, is it John 12? Where? John 57? 37, get that. John 5. John. John chapter 5 and verse, verse 37. Verse 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, have borne witness of me. Mm -hmm. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Christ said, you never seen the Father. You never dealt with the Father. The only God you know, Israel, is me. Right. Y'all understand that? Yes, wait, 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 wait. Revelation, is it 22 or 21? I want the part. 22, 4? Start at look, 3. Watch this. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 3. Yeah. And there shall be no more curse. So in the kingdom, the curse of Deuteronomy 20 going to be done, finished, over with. Go ahead. But the throne of God and of the Lamb. Notice it makes a distinction. The throne of God and of the Lamb. That's the Father and the Son. Go ahead. Shall be in it. Uh -huh. And his servants shall serve him. We are the servants that shall serve him. Now watch this. And they shall see his face. And they shall see his face. Because why? We never seen the Father before. But now, Christ said, I'm going to show it. <laughs> Y'all watch this. Here come the Father. Here come my daddy now. Read it again. And they shall see his face. Read. And his name shall be in their forehead. That's why Christ said in the kingdom, I'm going to give you my Father's name. Remember that? You got Israelites think they got it already. No, these is these is low-level brothers. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, brothers. Don't lie. I'm sorry. But they're low-level. They don't understand. Hopefully, after today's crash, y'all can step your game up. Lord's will. Now, let's go back to Revelation 19. I'm done with that. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11. Mm. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Come on. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Because he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Go ahead. That's right. And he had a name written uh -oh. that no man knew. What? But he himself. So everybody fighting. I know his name is Yeshua. His name is Yahweh Shai. Okay. Really? The Bible says he got a name nobody know. The Bible says he got a name nobody know. This is why the power is not in the earthly name. The power is in faith in God himself, the Lord himself. That's where the power comes. Y'all understand that? Read it again. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Come on. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Because when he came, put it on the screen, he did so much killing and said there was blood all on his garments. Go ahead. And his name is called the Word of God. Oh, now John said his name is called the Word of God. That's right. That's right. The same word you read about in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Go ahead. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. There's armies in heaven, brother. Brothers, there's armies in heaven. Go ahead. Upon white horses, mm -hmm. clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's the celestial bodies they got, go ahead. And out of his mouth go with a sharp sword. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. Hey, give me that. It's, it's Second Ezra, chapter 13, I think. It says uh, his word is like verse 9. Thank you. Get that for me. Second Ezra, chapter 13 and verse 9. Uh -huh. And lo. 
as he saw the violence of the multitude that came. As Christ saw the violence of the multitude that came. Put the other pictures up back up, Alicia. When he's fighting, I want war. Thank you. Put it on the screen now. Read it again. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, uh -huh. he neither lifted up his hand. Give me, yeah, go ahead. Nor held sword, mm -hmm. nor any instrument of war. Mm -hmm. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth. And I got to get some pictures of fire coming out of his mouth. Go ahead. Out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. Uh -huh. And out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest. Uh -huh. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath and the great tempest, mm. and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. There's going to be a lot of violence. Go ahead. And burned them up, everyone. And burned them up, everyone. So that upon a sudden of an innumerable... Did we read the part I wanted? Because I didn't hear it yet. Maybe I missed it. Oh, it's coming. Go ahead. And so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, mm -hmm. but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Afterward, I saw the same man come down from the mountain and the call. Same, wait, mm -mm, mm -mm. Let me let me hear it. Somebody, y'all gotta give me the right scripture. Verse seven thirty-seven. Let me hear thirty-seven thirty-eight. I hope this is right. Verse thirty-seven. And this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest, and right. shall lay before them their evil thoughts, and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, okay. which are like unto a flame. That's it, go ahead. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto fire. That's it right there. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So the Lord that Christ speaks is like fire. He's going to burn everything up. This is war. Where? Tell, uh, Alyssa, you got the picture we wanted from Telegram? She said, let me check. He didn't know. Come on, Alicia. Yeah, I want, the, yeah. Put it on the screen. Read the verse again and keep that picture right there. Read the verse again. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts. And the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto fire. Finish him. That's, some, that's power. Imagine just speaking the word of God, he's going to do much destruction. Damn. He said, I'm going to speak the word. It's going to burn. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Boom. Whoever, hey, whoever you want to commit adultery in behind, your, your vagina blow up. <laughs> That's some fervent heat right there. Where we at? I'm sorry. Uh, Revelation 19, 15. Okay, go ahead. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the, excuse me, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's right. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come. And gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, mm -hmm. that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men. That's how many dead bodies there's going to be. Good. And the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast That's and the NATO. Go ahead. And the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. That's what you read in 2nd Ezra 13. Go ahead. And the beast was taken. And the beast was taken. And seven with, heads and two horns. Seven and with, heads and ten horns. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And with him, the false prophet. That's the church system. Go ahead. That wrought miracles before him. That's the technology. Go ahead. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. That's, hey, hey, give me the mark of the beast. Um, uh, is it John 10, 14? 
Job, Job 10, 14. Job, get there for me. Thank y'all. Y'all don't get old. Help me. Come on. Job, chapter 10 and verse 14. If I sin, then thou markest me. That's the mark right there. Now go back to Revelation. Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, mm -hmm. and them that worshipped his image. That's right. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire. So the lake of fire, that hellfire is going to be opened up when Christ returns. Right now it's not open. Because he said he opens and he closes. He has the keys to hell and death. Y'all remember that Revelation 1.18? He said that. So right now when people die, they rest. But when he returns, that's when this gets opened. Go ahead. That's why he said, we read earlier, it said, All that are in the grave shall hear my voice. Some shall rise to the resurrection of eternal life, and some shall rise to the resurrection of damnation. Go ahead. These both were cast alive into, the, into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Come on. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, mm -hmm. which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. From there, from there. I want Revelation 20. And I want to start at verse... Do I want to start at 4? Yeah, let me at 4. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. Now, I don't want y'all to forget the thought, because I think we, I know we went on a bit. We might have forgot the thought. Real quick, before we read this, I want to bring us back to the initial thought. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15, and I think it was verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 25. For he must reign. Christ must reign. Till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Go ahead. Was that it? That was the end of verse 25. Okay. So that's all we wanted. So we understand Christ must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. So what we're reading, we read back Isaiah 34, Revelation 19, of Christ subduing the nations. Everybody with me so far? Now we're in Revelation 20. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them. And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And Power I, was given to us. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. These are the martyrs. Go ahead. And for the word of God, mm -hmm. and which had not worshipped the beast. So this ain't talking about brothers or sisters that got killed because they had a bad attitude. This is men and women that gave their life for the word of God. Go ahead. Well, actually, it's the men first and foremost, the men. So read it again. I'm sorry. Excuse me. And I saw the souls of them. Verse that, 4. Verse 4. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus mm -hmm. and for the word of God, Come on. and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, Neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. So we didn't worship the white man. We didn't accept none of his sin, his, his political policies, none of that. Go ahead. Or in their hands. Mm -hmm. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. We're going to live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Go ahead. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. So the rest of the dead is those of our people that rejected this truth. It said they live not again until the thousand years were finished. Go ahead. This is the first resurrection. This is the first resurrection from verse 4. Those men and women that are in the kingdom. Go ahead. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. So we all should want to take part in the first resurrection. Go ahead. On such, the second death hath no power. The second death, we're going to get to read it. It said that's going to have no power over those men and women that make the first resurrection. Go ahead. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. So let's That's talk about the man. Right. Go ahead. And shall reign with him a thousand years. Everybody going to be in order. Go ahead. And when the thousand years are expired. You know what's that? Remember David said, I'm, I'm sidestepping. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the, I can't quote, in the kingdom than something. What did he say? Than, a, than a live with the wicked. Anybody know what I'm talking about in the Psalms? Yes, sir. Somebody find me that. Can somebody find me that? Bring it out. You can Google it. Uh, Dave, Psalms. Where? Psalms chapter 84 and 10. I don't know if that's it. I'm not, tell me, read. Psalms chapter 84 and verse 10. 
For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. So that's heaven. You read that and think David's talking about... Do you know a doorkeeper is a line of defense? That's a powerful position. I'll give you an example. How many of y'all watched the movie Thor? Remember the black character Idris Elba played? Hemdell, I think it was or something like that. What was it? Hemdell. He was the doorkeeper. That dude was powerful. <laughs> you ain't no wimp guarding the door. The king's in there. You're going to put a wimp on the door. Are you stupid? Nobody does that. You're going to be a powerful brother to be the doorkeeper. <laughs> so, anyway, I said all that to go back now. Revelation. I forgot why I read that. Where was that? Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 7. Uh -huh. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, mm -hmm. Gog and Magog. So now, you no hey, notice, everybody ain't fully subdued yet. Gog and Magog still out there. Go ahead. To gather them together to battle. Mm. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So it's going to be another war. Go ahead. And they went up on the breadth of the, excuse me, and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Mm. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. Remember, the, the beast and the false prophet was put there first and whoever followed them. So now it says, now the devil's being cast in there. Okay, so yes, that's a spiritual demon, but that's also the other rest of the Edomites. Go ahead. And shall be tormented day and night mm. forever and ever. Y'all see that right, right there? So I don't know why people say there's going to be no torment. I don't know why certain Israelites say there will be no torment. Read on. And I saw a great white throne. Now here comes the second death. Read again. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. So, right here, read on. And there was found no place for them. Hold that, hold that. Give me John 5, 22. John, chapter 5 and verse 22. Watch what Christ said. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Read it again. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment Unto the Son. So who's doing all the judging, brothers? Christ. Let's That's go back right. to Revelation 20 again. Revela in verse 11. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. So now Christ comes with all power and glory and authority. Go ahead. And there was found no place for them. Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead, small and great. Stand before God. Mm -hmm. And the books were open. Uh -huh. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Everybody gets judged according to their works, not their thoughts, their works. Right? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Go ahead. This is the second death. That's the second death. Go ahead. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now that's some heavy stuff, but I'm just going to leave that right there. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15 and 25 again so we can catch up to the thought, the initial thought. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 25. For he must reign. Christ must reign. Till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Uh -huh. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Do you guys see it? Read it again. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Go back to Revelation 20 and 14 in case some of us are slow. Like I'm slow, so I'm talking about myself. Back to Revelation 20, 14. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15, 26 now. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed 
is death. Now from there, watch this. Watch this. Revelation 21, 12. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 12. Am I going too fast? I hear your little fingers just typing away. <laughs> this guy's like, chap, 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 chap. you should be a stenographer, bro. You are fast. I'll, I'm going to go slow. Revelation, Revelation chapter 21 and verse 12. And had a wall great and high and had 12 gates. And at the gates were 12 angels and names, excuse me, and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. That's right. And on the east, three gates. And on the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations. And in them, the names of the 12 apostles now of the Lamb. Now, people read this and go, how come there's 12 gates here? But in Ezekiel 48, um, Dan had a gate. Dan had a gate. Well, in Ezekiel 48, what captivity was, what, I'll just tell you. Ezekiel was, I'm going to ask, what captivity was Ezekiel currently in when he was prophesying? Babylon. So he was prophesying about the next captivity. When what happened when we got released by Cyrus, what did we do? What did we rebuild? The temple. And Dan had a gate. Everybody understand that? People say, well, Christ made a mistake. He didn't make no mistake. You know what he's saying. Now, read on. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city mm -hmm. and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed. Twelve thousand furlongs. Write this down. Twelve thousand furlongs is fifteen hundred miles. Fifteen hundred miles. Go ahead. The length. And the breadth and the height of it are equal. Y'all see that? Go ahead. And he measured the wall thereof, and 140 and four cubits. So that's about 216 feet. Go ahead. According to the measure of a man. Right, that was the measure of a man I just gave, but it's more than that. Read. That is of the angel. So it's going to be greater, bigger, longer than 216 feet. Because the measurement I wrote down was a measurement based on man's measurements. You don't know what size the angel is. Right. Everybody understand that? Everybody understand that? Yes, Read on. And the building of the wall of it was of Jasper. No, that was it. That's all I want. Um, real quick, go back to 1 Corinthians. Wait, wait. Because mm. we read Revelation 22, right? 1 through 4, we read that. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15. Read 26 again so we catch up. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15 and verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Mm -hmm. For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. Now that's hard. Let's go to Hebrews 2 and 8 to get to understanding. And we're going to come right back. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 8. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Right. Read it again. Read it again. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Mm -hmm. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. We see not all things put under the him there is Christ. Let's go back. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians chapter 15. Oh, and I want another one. I want another one. Give me Ephesians 1 22. Here's another one. It says something very similar. I think this one might be better. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22. He hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Right. Hey, let's start at verse 20. I like 20. I'm looking at it. Verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, 
not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Just let you know, he got a name that's greater. Than, it's not Jesus. It's not Yeshua. Those, every, you know how many Yeshuas I've met? How many brothers, and especially among Ephraim, they named their kids Jesus. Now you got brothers named Yahweh Shai. And I'm like, so that, those are not the names he's talking about. Read 21 again. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Mm -hmm. And have put all things under his feet. And have put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. That's Christ, go ahead. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 27. For he hath put all things under his feet. So he put all things under Christ's feet. Go ahead. But when the he, Father put all things under Christ's feet. Go ahead. But when he saith all things are put under him. But when he saith all things are put under Christ. It is manifest that he is expected. Not expected. That says accepted. Excuse me. Accepted. Meaning accept the Father. The Father is not going to submit himself under Christ. Everybody understand that? Read it again because I don't think everybody got it. Read it again. For he hath put all things under his feet. The Father put all things under Christ's feet. Go ahead. But when he saith all things are put under him. But when the Father saith all things are put under Christ. It is manifest that he is accepted. It's manifest that the Father is accepted. Meaning accept the Father. Go ahead. Which did put all things under him. Which did put all things under Christ. Y'all got that? Y'all wrote that down? All right, go ahead. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, mm -hmm. then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him. Now I want you to look at that part right there. Read that again. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, mm -hmm. then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him. So that when Christ subdues all nations on the planet Earth, after that thousand year reign, after Gog and Magog is subdued and destroyed, then, read that again, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, mm -hmm. that God may be all in all. Everything's right. going to get to connect it from the Father, the Son, the Spirit realm to the earthly realm. Okay? What verse you at? That was the end of verse 28. Go ahead. Verse 29. Else. What shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Now, what does it mean being baptized for the dead? Give me Romans 6. Here's the precept. Romans 6, verse 3 and 4. Romans chapter baptized 6. Baptized for the dead? That sounds strange. Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. Yeah. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ we're baptized into his death. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So that's that old man, that old woman is baptized into death. Go ahead. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Everybody in here should be walking in newness of life. Every man, every woman should be walking in newness of life. Of life. You should not be the same ratchet hoe you used to be. Or that grimy Negro that like to post up and just stay in people's houses. Go back. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 29. Mm -hmm. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all. Because remember, the argument is you have brothers teaching there's no resurrection of the dead. Go ahead. Why are they then baptized for the dead? Why are they then baptized for the dead? Why do you change your life around? Why do you become this new man, this new woman? Why? Go ahead. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? And why do we jeopardize our lives every hour? Wait, uh, give me that in Romans 8.36. Paul said we in jeopardy every hour. Romans chapter 8 and verse 36. As it is written. For thy sake, we are killed all the day long. Because there was bounties on the followers of Christ. Y'all got to understand it. Because on t they don't show it on TV. You got Paul and them walking around. Yeah, 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 yeah. These dudes was running and hiding. And that's the same way it's going to happen here. If the ADL get their way. If, what's that, Kufi, Christian United for Israel get their way. 
making legislation talking about uh, the way we teach the Bible is hate speech, not to teach anything against the LGBT. And don't teach about so-called white men. That's hate speech. So if you do that, you go to jail. You lose your houses. You lose your job. Didn't Candace Owens just get fired? Candace Owens just got fired from her job with the Daily Wire because she was speaking against Amalek, these so-called Jewish people. So, and they're gang. And they're, say on the mic. She spoke about Amalek and their gang. That's right. They're, they have gangs in the uh, sports world. They have gangs in the entertainment field, gangs on social media, gangs in the government. They got, they are a damn gang, man. Exactly. There you go right there. Ben Shapiro, because he's Amalek, the Daily Wire severs ties with Candace Owens after her embrace of anti-Semitic rhetoric. So she was speaking against Amalek, saying the same right what they're doing. They didn't like that. Now, remember, she married to an Edomite that's wealthy. I think he's a prince or something. He's rich. Royalty, whatever they call it. Now, if they do that to her, what do you think they'll do to the rest of us? Just think about it. Because a lot of times, these people, they marry white folks. Put it on the screen. They marry white folks for protection, fame, and fortune. That didn't help her. So here you are, black man, black woman, y'all together. The only thing we got is the most high. And that's all we need. That's right, right there. So where we at, officer? Romans chapter 8 and verse 36. Romans. Go back. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 30. Uh -huh. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? Mm -hmm. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. our Lord. That's right. I die daily. I die daily. That old man dies daily. Right? If after the manner of men... I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Now, that part right there. When he says he fought at beasts with Ephesus, that's talking about Negroes. He fought with dumb, evil niggas. Give me that in Acts 19. I want verse 28 to 31. Because talk about Ephesus. Acts chapter 19 and verse... What, what verse I said? 28 to 31. Okay, let me look, let me look. Yeah, 28. Acts chapter 19 and verse 28. And when they heard these sayings... They were full of wrath and cried Wait, start out. Start at verse 1. Verse 1, we're doing on a jump. Acts chapter 19 and verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. So he's at Ephesus. Now jump back to 28. Verse 28. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion. And having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, mm. they rushed with one accord into the theater. This is a violent scene. This is a very violent scene. Go ahead. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. They said, no, you can't go in there. Go ahead. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. So, you know, the spirit of Paul is, I don't care. Let me go. I'm going in. Paul was a warrior. He was a soldier of the most high God. Okay. But his friends, they said, no, you can't go in. They're going to hurt you. So Paul was struggling to get him. Remember, the crowd came against them. They had to pull Paul from the crowd. Okay. So now go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 15.32. Chapter 15 and verse 32. If after the manner of men, after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at niggas, Ephesus. Niggas, I fought with evil black niggas. Go ahead. At Ephesus. At Ephesus. What advantage, it, excuse me, what advantage it me? If the dead rise not, uh -huh. let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. What's the advantage of me going around? I've risked my life for this. I'm teaching this gospel. I jump in my life. What's the advantage? I might as well eat and drink because tomorrow we die. Let's go back to the way we used to be. Y'all understand what he's saying? All right. I only, only heard four people. Do y'all understand what he's saying? All right. Come on. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now, that right there. Now, I know we always bring it up. But what is he really talking about? You right there. You at the mic. You, I want you to answer. Yep. My light skinned brother right there. <laughs> you know, you better not get it wrong either.
Evil communications corrupt good matters. What is he talking about specifically? Oh, Aiden got the answer. Okay, have a seat. Aiden, come on. Do you know, Aiden? Because if you know, come give it. If you don't know, just have a seat. Uh, saying that there's no uh, resurrection. That's it. That's the answer. Everybody understand that? Remember, from verse 1, the argument was niggas. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say, keep saying the word. Black people in Corinth were saying there is no resurrection. So that everybody understand that? So although we do use it for music and stuff like that, which is fine, but the initial thought is that teaching that there's no resurrection of the dead. Okay? Where we at now? Go verse, back. Uh, verse 33. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Read verse 12. Verse 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Do y'all see it? All right, good. So now let's go on back to verse 34 now. Verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Mm. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Now, I tell, let me tell y'all something. He's telling us to stop sinning and to awake to righteousness and sin not. Got a story. Want to hear it? Yeah. Right, here you go. We had a lovely sister among us. She said, I'm waiting to prove a brother. Pretty sister. We get a phone call. Deacon ASF gets the phone call. It's the Edomite on the phone. Hey, listen. You got, a, you got my girl in the congregation. Now, I'm, she's just not my girl. She's a few men's girl. What are you talking about, Asaph says? I'm telling you, she's sitting there with you and she ain't no damn good. She's a hoe and she knows she's a hoe. I pay her rent. I, get, I beat her cookies every other night. Asaph said, that's a lie. You lying on that sister. He said, I'm going to show you the images, the photographs to prove it. Uh, Alicia, do you have it? Now I blacked out the faces. Not me, Alicia. Come on, bro. He put my picture up. Go ahead. Put it on the screen. He said, that's me stroking her leg. Give me the next picture. He tests me and her at the restaurant. I take the hoe out. I pay for her. I pay her rent. I mow everything. I take care of her. And she going to talk about the white man at the devil. Give me the next picture. He said, and that's not just me. He said, she got a black brother too. She's dating. Look at the fringes of the border blue. Damn. Brothers, I'm telling you, you got to watch these hoes. Give me the next picture. That is a whole different brother right here. That's the same sisters having dinner, a drink with. Give me the next picture. This is the East Indian man. Look at the tattoo on the leg. It's the same woman. The Edomite blew her spot up. Take it down. Thank you. Take it down. The Edomite blew her spot up. And she's one of those sisters, you know, shalom and bow real low. How low can she go? She was proving a brother. She, I'm, this, woman, this sister was getting around, bro. You better prove these sisters. You better check out their personal life. Some of them ain't right. Where we at, brother? Verse 34. Got me all disturbed, discombobulated. Come on. Awake to righteousness and sin not. You read it again. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Stop it. Stop sinning. Go ahead. For some have not the knowledge of God. Some of you brothers and sisters do not have the knowledge of God. Although you got fringes in the border of blue. God, I speak this to your shame. Paul said, I'm speaking this to your shame. You should feel bad. Good. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up? So now some men will say, how are the dead raised up? Good. And with what body do they come? So if they're resurrected, what kind of body are they going to have? So they make a mockery now. What kind of body will they have? Go ahead. Thou fool. Thou, you idiot. Go ahead. That which thou sowest is not quickened 
except it die. Now, here's a precept. Give me John 12, 23. John, chapter 12. Wait, wait, wait. You know I'm slow. Okay. John, chapter 12 and verse 23. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Watch this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Watch this. He that loveth his life shall lose it. So he's comparing the believers to that corn of wheat. I want you to read 24 again. I want us to see the thought that Christ is trying to teach us. Verse, right? verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Come on. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Read it again. Read 25 again. He that loveth his life shall lose it. If you love your life in this world, you're going to lose it. Go ahead. And he that hateth his life. If he that hates his life, in, meaning you hate being under uh, America's system, you hate this system of sin. Go ahead. In this world shall keep it. You're going to keep it. Unto life eternal. Unto life eternal. Everybody see that right there? Let's go back. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 36. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest. So quickened means transformed, changed. He said you have to die first. You must die. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. And that which thou sowest. I know death is something black people don't like to talk about. But he's saying, he's letting us know that is one of the doorways to stand before him. That's it's death. right. And the death he's talking about is not, I'm an adulterer and I had a heart attack and died. He's not talking about that. You're going to get condemnation. He's talking about being a martyr or dying in this truth. Read again. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Mm -hmm. Read again. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, mm -hmm. but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Put it on the screen, Elisha. So he uses a grain, a, a seed. You put the seed in the ground and it starts to grow, right? Then you see the husk, the body. You see the shell is dead. It's on the ground, right? Then what comes from that is either, he said what? It's either wheat or some other grain. Corn, wheat, or whatever, some other grain. Everybody see the transformation? So in John 12 and 1 Corinthians 15, the Lord has given us the same analogy. Death must come to get that new body. That new celestial body. What verse you at now? Verse 38. Go ahead. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. And Elisha, give me the next picture. I know I had another one. I need y'all to stay with me. Okay, you got the seed on the left, and notice the transformation. It's coming out of the shell. The shell is our physical flesh. Now, notice it's growing to something else. So Christ is teaching us this body must die in order to get your new body, your celestial, your God body. Everybody That's understand? Right. Your real body. That's what Christ is teaching us. Where are we at now? Read it again. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, mm -hmm. and to every seed his own body. And to every seed his own body. Go ahead. All flesh is not the same flesh. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men. Put men up. One kind of flesh of men. Come on, Alicia, stay with me. Don't nobody better be lusting, sisters. One kind of flesh of men. Go ahead. Another flesh of beasts. Another flesh of beasts. Okay, read. Another of fishes. Another of fishes. Go ahead. And another of birds. And another flesh of birds. 
Go ahead. There are also celestial bodies. Now it says there are also, like you see there, celestial bodies. Those are God bodies. That's right. Read that part again. There are also celestial bodies uh -huh. and bodies terrestrial. And but give me the next picture. Embodied terrestrial. Adam was made from the dust of the ground. Terrestrial. Terra is Latin for earth. Of the earth. That's a terrestrial body right there. Go ahead. But... The glory of the celestial is one. Give me the celestial. The glory of the celestial is one. That's the God body. Go ahead. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. And the glory of the ter terrestrial, which is of the earth, is another. Everybody understands that, right? Go ahead. There is one glory of the sun. There is one glory of the sun. And another glory of the moon. And is a different type of glory of the moon. Go ahead. And another glory of the stars. And another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star For in glory. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Go ahead. So also is the resurrection of the dead. I want you to look at that. He gives an analogy of different types of celestial bodies, right? He goes from sun, moon, stars. Then he says one star differeth from another star in glory. So, is also, so also is the resurrection of the dead. That's why I say... It's not going to be an equality thing. We're going to have celestial bodies, but it's going to be a different power levels with everybody. Everybody understand that? I hope you do. Where we at? Verse 42. Go ahead. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Mm -hmm. It is sown in corruption. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. So once that body dies, you're going to get that new body. That's right. That God body. Go ahead. It is sown in dishonor. It is sown in This body is in dishonor. Go ahead. It is, Why is it dishonor? Because it's sick. It's frail. It's flimsy. It's flatty. Go ahead. It is raised in glory. It is raised in glory. It is sown Not in... Not yet. I don't want that yet, Alicia. Take that. Yeah, leave those up. Go ahead. It is sown in wicked. Excuse me. It is sown in weakness. Uh-huh. Because this body is weak. Go ahead. It is raised in power. It is raised in power. Go ahead. It is sown a natural body. Mm -hmm. This is, is a natural body we got. It is raised a spiritual body. It is raised a spiritual body. Go ahead. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. So we got to understand that. There's a natural body and there is a spiritual body. That's why when, we, when this body dies, we're before the Lord in our spiritual bodies. Our celestial bodies. Everybody understand that? So what you scared for? <laughs> Come on. Verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Mm -hmm. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now you can put Adam up. Now, see, when we talk about Adam, he don't put him up. Read it again. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Uh -huh. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. He's going to explain. He's going to explain. Go ahead, read. How be it. That was not first, which is spiritual. The first Adam was not spiritual. Go ahead. But that which is natural. That which is of the earth. Go ahead. And afterward, that which is spiritual. Which is Christ. He's going to explain in verse 47 if you're confused. The first man is of the earth. The first man, Adam, is of the earth. Go ahead. Earthy. Earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Do you see that? The second man is the Lord of heaven. Hey, That's give me that right. in our Luke 3. Watch. I'm going to show you. Luke 3. I want Luke 3, 23 down. Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. Uh -huh. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph. So, go ahead. Which was the son of Heli. See that part right there? The son of Heli. In the translation, it says the son-in-law of Heli. So who is Heli to Mary? If Heli is Joseph's father-in-law, who is Heli to Mary? His father, her father, her father. Read it again. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, mm -hmm. which was the son of Heli. What? Hold on, hold on. Go ahead, get me Matthew 1. I got to show you. Matthew 1. 
Matthew 1. Mm. And start at 15. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 15. And Eliud begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Methan, and Methan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph. Who was Joseph's father? Jacob was Joseph's father. Read. The husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Now back to Luke 3 and verse 23. Luke chapter 3 and verse 23. Who was Joseph's father again? Jacob. Go ahead. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. So Heli wasn't his father. Jacob was. This is father-in-law of Joseph. So this is Mary's lineage is given. Now jump down to verse, get to the point, get to verse 37. Verse 37, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malalil, which was the son of Cain, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So who was Adam? Which was the son of God. The son of God. Everybody see right. that? Let's go back now. We was in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 47. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 47. The first man is of the Put on his, go ahead. The first man is of the earth. Show me Adam first. Wait, yes, give me Adam. Yes. I need y'all to stay in the spirit. Show me the other ones. This is Adam, made from the dust of the ground. Go ahead. The first Remember man. Remember said, let us make man. Us, let us uh, yeah, get it real quick. Cause, uh, wait, go back. Go back. Go back. Go. Give me all the hands. I want all the multi hands. Read it there. Give me Genesis 126. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, Let us. What? Let us. Huh? Let us. Huh? It's more than one. More than one. So this is Christ and the angels. Everybody see that? Now go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 47. The first man is of the earth. Now give me all the pictures on Adam right there. That's right. Adam being made from the dust of the ground. Okay. Give me some more. Is that it? Come on. I need you to put them all up on the screen. Just go through them. Okay. Read on now. Earthy. Earthy. The second man is Now the, here come the second man. Is the Lord from heaven. Is the Lord from heaven. There's more than one picture. Let's you come on. Tell us this. Got the art team spending all that time. He's gonna put one up, and then at the end of class, say, "Oh, you, you didn't you didn't show these pictures." Tell us this. So these go with Revelation one fourteen. Was that it, Elisha? All right. Now where we at? Verse forty eight. Now. Yes. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Ah, uh, that's us. And as is the heavenly, mm -hmm. such are they also that are heavenly. Yeah, that's right. Come on. And as we wait, have. Wait, wait, wait. Give me the earthy pictures now. Show me the men of the earth. Right. Put them on the screen. Come on, bro. This is earthy. Give me the next one. Earthy. Go ahead. Earthy. Was that it? Earthy. That was it? You sure? All right. Read it again. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Mm -hmm. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Now let's look at the heavenly. Come on, this is the, the we, hey, remember Revelation 1, 7 or 6? Give me that real quick. Elisha, not Elisha, uh, what's his name? Uzziah. 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 Give me that. About he shall make us a kingdom of kings and priests. Revelation 1, 6 or 1, 7, something like that. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. Verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests mm -hmm. unto God. And his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So us being kings and priests is in the kingdom. Come on, let's give me some more images. This is us in body empowered on the... Hey, don't that look like Captain Joel? Oh, yeah, yeah. oh listen, that looked like Captain Joel right there. That looked like Deacon Malachi right there. That's how I'm looking. I'm like, what the hell are Deacon Isaac? Go ahead. So go back now to the scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15 and verse 48. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Mm -hmm. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 
And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So just like we bear the image of Adam, we shall bear the image of Christ. Just as we have the earthly body of Adam, we're going to have the spiritual body of Christ. That's right. Read. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's hey, People talking about, um, uh, give me, I think I want a scripture. Somebody help me. I want the scripture where it says the nation shall bring their wealth to the kingdom. Give me that. Yes, give me that. Isaiah 60, somewhere in there. 10? Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Mm. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. Okay. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. That's what I want right there. That's what I want right there. Now, we just read flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom. So do you think these other nations are walking through them gates? Hell no. No. Didn't we read in Revelation 21, there's angels at the gates? Did we read that earlier or we didn't? We read that. They're not, they cannot go in. Okay. So where was you just reading that? Uh, 1 Corinthians. You read 16 and 11, right? Read again, 16 and 11. Oh, yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 16 verse 11. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Meaning the wealth of the Gentiles, go ahead. And that their kings may be brought. Their kings are going to be brought in chains. Now look at Revelation 21, 25 as a precept. Revelation chapter 21. Wait, wait. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 25. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. But there shall be no night there. Right. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into start it. Start at 24. Start at 24. Verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. Mm -hmm. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. Mm -hmm. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. So guess what? The ambassadors of Christ, the kings and priests, those nations are going to be forced to bring their wealth up to us. But they're not walking through the gates. Y'all understand that? Yes, Go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 50. 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Hey, hold on. Give me 1 Timothy 6, 16. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 16. Who only hath immortality. Who only hath immortality. Read the verse above it so we know what it's talking about. Verse 15. Which in his times he shall show. Who is the blessed and only potentate. Potentate. The, potentate. The King of kings and Lord of lords, Me? who only hath immortality, uh -huh. dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, mm. whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. That's, mm. right. Right. That's some heavy stuff right here. Hey, give me uh, 2 Ezra 6.26. 2 Ezra. Chapter 6 and verse 26. That Christ in his power, in his spiritual power, no man can approach to him. That's why he said to Moses, remember Moses said, show me what you look like. He said, no man can see me and live. You understand that? He said, I'll show you my back part, but you got to go in this cave and I'll cover you. I'm paraphrasing. I ain't quoting it. I'll cover you with my hand. Y'all remember that? All right. Where does that go? <clears throat> Second Ezra, <clears throat> chapter 6 and verse 26. <clears throat> And the men that are received shall see it, whom have not tasted death from their birth. Read again, read again. And the men that, sh that are received shall see it. And the men that are received shall receive it. Go ahead. Who have not tasted death from their birth. Who have not tasted death from their birth. There's some men who are not going to die. Does everybody understand that? That's what it's saying in Zechariah. Uh, is it? 13 and 8, about the one-third that come through the fire. 
One third is not going to die. They will never see death. Who they are, we don't know yet. But in that moment, you're going to know. What was it? You finished that verse? No, sir. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. Do y'all see that? Change in a twinkling of an eye. Give me uh, Wisdom of Solomon 3 and 7. Hmm. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 7. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine. In the time of their visitation, when the Lord returns, they shall shine. Go ahead. And run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. Now that's the best way they explain it. But to run to and fro like sparks of fire, that means people going, Israel going to have spiritual power. Everybody understand that? Read it again. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine mm. and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. Mm. Hey, doesn't it say something similar in Daniel 12? Let me hear it. Or is it Daniel? Let me see. 12 Daniel 12, 13. Mm. Let me look. Let me, look. Let me Read it. Let me hear it. Uh, Daniel chapter... I don't think that's it, sir. Daniel, Let me hear three. Let me hear verse three. Daniel chapter 12 and verse three. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. See that? And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. That's God's on earth. Israel shall be transformed into God's on earth. That's right. right. And they that turn many to righteousness. That, see, that's why it's so important for us to teach the gospel, for us to teach and wake up our people. Read that part again. And they that turn many to righteousness mm -hmm. as the stars forever and ever. As the stars. Remember what we read in Corinthians. Every star has a different glory. He said we're going to be like the stars forever and ever. Everybody say, understand that? Because that's some heavy stuff when you meditate on it. Did you finish the verse? Yes, sir. Go back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15 and verse 50. Now this I say, brethren. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Mm -hmm. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die. When he says sleep, he's talking about die. Go ahead. But we shall all be changed. Remember we just read in Ezra, it said we shall be changed into another meaning. Everybody understand that? So give me that one, uh, Philippians 3.21. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21. Who shall change our vile body? Who shall change our vile body? What makes this body vile is weak and sickly. Flabby is all jacked up. Read it again. Who shall change our vile body? That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. We're going to have a body like Christ. We're going to have that God body. That's right. Everybody understand that? Whoa, come on now. Give me, go back. First Corinthians. No, I'll give me first Thessalonians. Here's another precept. First Thessalonians 4, 14 to 16. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He's going to bring with him. Go ahead. For so don't worry about those that died. He said, I'm going to bring them with me. Go ahead. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain. So that lets you know some brothers, some sisters will still be alive when Christ return. Go ahead. Unto the coming of the Lord mm -hmm. shall not prevent them which are asleep. We ain't going to prevent them that died. Go ahead. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven mm -hmm. with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Guess what? They're, hey, they're not going to rise up from the ground. They're going to rise from their chambers in the heavens. Because remember, when you die, where does your spirit go? It goes up. So when it says they shall rise, it's about rise from the chambers that they're in, in heaven. Like it says in Revelation 6, remember the souls that were under the altar. It used the term altar. Everybody with me so far? All right, read on. Then... We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds mm. to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh -huh. Wherefore, comfort one another with these says, words. Comfort one another with these words. What you so worried of? You can cry for the dead a day or two, but that's it. 
Don't lose your mind because you're going to see them again in their new God body, their new celestial body. Right? But you got to believe that. Go ahead. Was that it? That was it. All right, go back. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible mm -hmm. and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. So he's telling you the same thing we just read. We shall be changed. For the corruptible shall put on incorruption. Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. This mortal body must put on immortality. Give me that Romans 2, 7. Romans chapter 2 and verse 7. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and, and immortality, eternal life. You see that right there? To them who by patient continuance. That's what I tell you about battle fatigue. You got to shake that spirit off when you're feeling ti spiritually tired. You want to go back and commit adultery? Oh, shake that spirit. Read it again. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing. Seek for glory. We got to seek for glory. And honor. And honor. And immortality. And immortality. Eternal life. Now watch this next part. But unto them that are contentious. Yes, you argumentative. I'm confused. Yellow make me sad, brothers. I don't get it, brothers and sisters. Read it again. But unto them that are contentious mm -hmm. and do not obey the truth. Because that's the root behind all the confusion, all the hatred. They don't obey the truth. Read again. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, mm -hmm. indignation and wrath. Watch this. Tribulation and anguish mm -hmm. upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Mm. Of the Jew first. Of Judah first. And also of the Gentiles. And also of the rest of Israel. Let's go on back. No, no, no. Second Ezra 743. I'm sorry. Second Ezra 743. Second Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 43. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. Ah, the day of doom shall be the end of this time. Read it again. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. And the beginning of the immortality for to come. Mm. That's right. Wherein corruption is past. Read it. I just want to hear it again. I like the way it sounds. Go ahead. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. That's Christ's return. Go ahead. And the beginning of the immortality for to come. Uh -huh. Remember it said, Esau shall be the end of the world, but Jacob shall the beginning of it that cometh thereafter. Go ahead. Read. And the beginning of immortality for to come. Mm -hmm. Wherein corruption is past. Good. Intemperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up. Read. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed. Anybody that's destined for damnation, you can't help them. You can't save your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother. Read again. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed nor to oppress him that hath gotten the victory. Mm, nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. If we get the victory, that's just what we want. To overcome our personal trials, tribulations, sins, and hang-ups. Go on back now. No, nope, chapter 8. I want chapter 8. 2nd Ezra 8, 54. 2nd Ezra, chapter 8 and verse 54. Sorrows are past, and in the end is showed the treasure of immortality. Mm. We want that immortality. And it's not immortality. What good is it if you're immortal but you're constantly oppressed? That's not immortality. Immortality is that God level. That's you are the right. ruler, not the oppressed. Everybody understand that? Mm. Wisdom of Solomon 8, 17. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 17. Now, when I consider these things in myself, and pondered them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. To be allied unto wisdom is immortality. Remember Corinthians said Christ is the wisdom of God and power of God. So to be allied to wisdom, which is Christ, is immortality. Choose your friends wisely. Let's go back. 
1 Corinthians 15, 54. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 54. So then this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Give me that in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, 1 and 10. 2 Timothy 1, 10. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 10. Can I get it first? Thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, go ahead. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 10. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death. See, it says Christ going to do, who hath abolished death. Go ahead. And hath brought life and immortality. And hath brought life and immortality. To light through the gospel. Y'all see what Christ right. going to do right there? Let's go back. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. We're going to pause right there. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Give me that in James uh, 1.12. James 1, 12. James. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Come on, 1 and 12. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endure temptation. Because temptation is going to come For every when, day. You ever get tempted and, and a, a spirit will come from your old sin? It'll come, then it'll go away. And you say, okay, I'm good. But it'll pop back up next month <clears throat> or next week. Read again. Blessed is the man <clears throat> that, that endure temptation. Mm -hmm. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. When he, when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Go ahead. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Mm. Come on. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Mm. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Here come. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So God didn't make you a homosexual. <laughs> God made me this way. No, 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 no. You, that's your lust. Whether or not you got molested as a child, you got fondled, you, you, there's always something in the background. You got it called, everybody got that nasty aunt or uncle or cousin that like to be touchy-feely. So something happened to you. So now you got those thoughts. Read it again. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Uh -huh. Now it ain't just homosexuality, it's any sin, whatever you're battling with. You got to put you in the verse. What am I being tempted with? Is it adultery? Is it lying? Is it stealing? Is it malice? Is it murder? Is it idolatry? I want to go back to Islam. Is it that? Is it Christianity? I just love white Jesus. Is it that? Read again. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Watch this. Then, when lust hath conceived, when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, mm. and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. You see that right there? And the death he's talking about is not the regular, oh, I had a heart attack and died. He's talking about damnation. Because death is put for every man and woman on the planet. That's the lot. But this death he's talking about is that condemnation. Have I got that? Give me um, Romans 7 and 7. I should have read that first. Romans chapter 7 and verse 7. We're almost done. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law sin? Is something wrong with the law? God forbid. The answer, can somebody tell a Christian that? There's nothing wrong with God's law. Go ahead. Nay, I had not known sin. You would never know what sin is. But by the law. But by the law. For I had not known lust. Except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So when you want to understand, what is lust? Understand that, Lord, thou shalt not covet anything that is thy neighbor's. Not his wife, not his ox, not his ass, not his house. It gives a whole list. Don't desire things that is not yours. Because once you desire that, then it leads to, give me that in the Ephesians 4, 28, I think, or 23, about stealing. Yeah, that one. It's Ephesians 4, it's 28 or 23. I ain't looking at it. Help me. 
28. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. See that? Because coveting is an internal sin. It starts there. I want something that you got. So what's the next thing? The next sin you break after you covet, you entertain covetousness, is stealing. Then, let's say you, you steal an object, right? But that might not be what you covet after. You might covet the man's wife. Give me that in Deuteronomy 22, 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die. Mm. Both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. Notice it started with covetousness. That's the thought. If it's some object you want, you steal that. If it's the woman, then you, remember, we, didn't we, uh, somebody, it wasn't us. Last week, a woman was in prison. She cut open a woman's stomach and yes. stole the baby. Yes. You can't make this stuff up. Okay. <laughs> now, if it ain't that, then it's give me the one in uh, Exodus 20, thou should not kill, please. No, I want the one in Matthew 5. I want the one in Matthew 5. I like the way Christ said it. Thou have heard of old time, thou shalt not kill. I want that verse. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. The judgment is that second death, that lake of fire, that damn nation. But watch what he says next. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause. See that? It starts within. It starts within. So you want the man's wife. You got hatred for the man. You may try to befriend him. There's many steps that covetousness will take you. I'm going to befriend him. Remember the sister? Not nobody here. She befriended the other sister. Florida, I believe it was. She says to the sister, can your husband... Um... No, she said to the sister, do you mind if I stay with you a while because I don't have a place to live? The sister says, okay, you can stay with me. You know what I'm talking about. The sister was... What a buck thirty, lovely, sister stays in the house with the wife. The wife is, let me be nice, I ain't going to say what the wife is. Anyway, so she stays there. And sister says, well, for my generosity, I'm going to wash everybody's clothes. She's washing everybody's clothes, washing her husband's clothes and all that. Then the wife notices that in the wee hours of the night, the husband disappears. And you hear... Ah, ah, ch ah, ooh, ch ah, ah, ch ah. What the hell is going on here? True story. True story. True story. Another story. Sister says this is in Texas. I want to say Texas. Um, I don't have a car. Do you mind if your husband takes me to the laundry? She says, sure. Husband takes it to the laundry. After a while, he would just leave it there. But after a while, he starts to stick around, wait for her to take her back to the house. Before you know it, the damn woman stole the husband from the wife. So hatred comes in there. That's the spirit of hatred. Read 22 again, I'm sorry. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, meaning thou fool, vain fellow, shall be in danger of the counsel. The counsel is man's counsel. We're counseling you, hey, what you mad with that brother or that sister for? Stop it. Cut it out. Stop it. You go, oh, okay, I'm sorry. But then what happens, good? But whosoever shall say, thou fool. You come back. You got the same spirit on you, good? Shall be in danger of hellfire. What's that hellfire, brothers? That's that damnation. Make a fire. Go back to 1 Corinthians 15. We almost done, Alicia. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? O mm -hmm. grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The sting of death is sin. That's what's going to get you. The, the wages of sin is what? Death. death. Right? And, and that death ain't have a heart attack and die. That death is what, brothers? 
that damnation, that lake of fire, that second death. That's the death. Read again. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Sin gets its strength from the law, because the law says, thou shalt not do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you decide, I am going to do A, B, C, D. I don't like E, so I'm going to do J over here, J, K. I'm going to do that. You're building wages to be put to death. You want that paycheck? You're going to get that check. Read. But thanks be to Come God. On, listen, you know what I want. <clears throat> Go ahead. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We only get the victory through our... Give me that in Revelation uh, 12. It might be 9, 10. I forgot. You know, you know what I'm talking about? We overcome. I want that. <clears throat> Verse 11, thank you. Revelation, chapter 12 and verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. That's the victory Paul's talking about. Read again. Right. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb mm -hmm. and by the word of their testimony. But watch this next part. And they love not their lives unto death. You see that? That's the level we all got to get to. That's a building process. Go back. <clears throat> I got excuse me, this AC make a mess me up. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57. Mm -hmm. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Wait, 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 read it again. Therefore, my beloved brethren. So this is to us, go ahead. Be ye steadfast. We gotta be steadfast in God's truth. Unmovable. We gotta be unmovable. Don't let nobody come in your ear and shake your foundation. <laughs> be unmovable. Right. We gotta have unshakable faith. There should be nothing, no man, no woman say, no D discovery channel you looked at or saw that shakes you in this truth. <laughs> read it again. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. That's always abounding in what? In the That's work right. of the Lord. Come on. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor ain't in vain, brothers. Y'all understand that? Twelve tribes! Twelve tribes! Twelve tribes! And with that, we say shalom. All praise, all praise for the Lord. My voice is gone, brothers. This daggone AC jacked me up. Give me a candy. Now y'all got 1 Corinthians 15. Y'all should understand it. All praises. My voice was gone. All praise. All praise. Hmm? Oh. Oh, we ain't got no announcements? Wait, no announcements? Okay, they're starting to pour in now. Hey, give the Lord a hand for that class, y'all. <laughs> Make sure you go over it again and again and again and again. That is definitely not a one-time watch. That's right. Hell to the no, 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 no. Bro, you think we out here for hugs right now? We, we at war, bro. You think we out here? We have to. We at war for the souls of our people. Yeah. Don't come up against the problems of God. Quote it stuff, and you can't substantiate what you quote it. You can't back on what you quote it. Go to Christian church and just be cool and run your life. No man walk his behind up and say, "I'm gonna write a Bible and control everybody." That's impossible. Oh God, you truly better God if you walk away from God's word. So sit here and learn, bro. The Jewish people today, they are not in poverty. They own half these casinos on the strip. They own the entertainment business. What did I say about the 
by his death alone. He died to give you what? The chance to be saved. It's the patience that we have. Why? Because we had to go through poverty. What? We the ones that last hired first Friday what? and get shot down in the street. What? We the ones that's being hated. What? Why they, why they uh, put up a, a, a white image of Christ when they know it was black? What? The Romans crucified a black man on that cross. What? Just like they crucify every black man on the damn street in America. What? They never crucify no white man. What? Ain't no white man ever died for the whole world. Ain't never happened. All praises, all praises to the Most High. IUIC Las Vegas completed their first ever 60 days of camp. Demons came out and was met with much oppression, but the word of God still went out strong. All praises to the Most High. Next, next. Radio show. We're here with Miss Upson Bush. And she's an adult that seen the presentation and want to get her words on what she thought about it. Joseph was Jesus' father. You saw him. That's him right here. Right? It's because he don't look the way they thought he looked. Right. Absolutely. That's See? Him. That's all oh, right. See the little that's, spirit. Yeah, look. That's what Okay, look. See what that is. Go ahead. Do it. Oh, so, so, you ain't believe me. You see that? That's Jesus. That's Jesus. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> that, is, is, does that look different than what you're used to? Yeah. yeah. What, 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 what? Say what? They're using like white. Oh, oh, God. Yeah. These are some very sharp children. As they watched Joseph's dreams, they could connect the dots. It was very impressive. They knew who Joseph was. They knew who Herod was. And they knew they, who Christ was coming to save. They knew who Christ was coming to save. And just like what you said um, with the videos we showed with, uh, with uh, Asada Shakur, with uh, Chata Jimenez, Eddie Goodman, Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Nathaniel um, we showed them real life revolutionaries. Who is that, Bishop? Bishop bringing this to us people need to see this so if you have not seen this i tell you what y'all better call them up this is really good for us to see all right so lions den radio show iuic tv uh captain kimmy will officer michael and with that you say shalom all right all right we got captain kimmy will and also michael putting in work out there in orlando IUIC Orlando Lions Den Radio Show did a hidden history presentation at a local school and showed Joseph's dream and the music video that was shown. The youth learned about our true history and real revolutionary, including IUIC's own Bishop Nathaniel. That's right. All praise. Let's go, uh, Savannah. Shalom, my side press bless. Officer Uziel, I'm with Officer Ezra, Officer Ezekiah. We're at our third youth violence conflict resolution seminar down here in Brunswick, Georgia. And we're in Brunswick, Georgia because the crime rate, the youth violence is out of control down here in Brunswick. Youth violence is common. Homicide is the third leading cause of death for youth people ages 10 to 24. And the leading cause of death for non-Hispanic black or African-American youth. Emergency departments such as ourselves treat over 800 youth people for physical assault related injuries each day. Each day? Each day. 800? Each day. How many again? 800. In this community every day? Yes, in our joint communities, if not more. We actually had a shot fire call not too far from here a little while ago. We was able to bring out a few scriptures to show them that the crime that they're involved in it's because we have a lack of identity and we don't love one another. That's why we're involved in crime, violence, which is sin in the Bible. So all praises to the Most High. We had a great, great outturn. A lot of people showed up. All right, all right. And we need a youth violence and conflict resolution seminar in every city where our people are at. The prophets of IUIC Savannah held their third youth violence and conflict resolution seminar in Brunswick, Georgia, bringing a solution to the root causes of violence and how to work towards building safer neighborhoods. All right. Let's see.
Let's go look like we what we got next. Uh, I U I C Philly. Oh, this is the Bronx. I'm Christ bless Israel. Today we had a great opportunity to complete our youth violence, conflict, and resolution. And today we have with us Mrs. Tisha. Well, the information that you brothers provided was supreme, powerful. I respect it. I think that our youth in this community center and around our surrounding communities need to always be abreast on information that you guys have. I think it's vital that they heard you gentlemen, that they see you gentlemen, and that you guys look like them, familiar and very relatable. First and foremost, let me tell you this. I, my daughter was killed in sisters' violence. So I'm here because I want to impact the kids. I want to make a difference. I don't want them out there killing each other. Hey, Shalom Israel, Mosai Christ Bless. Officer LaCroix here, uh, with me. Officer Haim. Officer Jezreel. Officer Bishayel. And we just finished our first youth violence conflict resolution seminar. It was a good turnout. Uh, our person on side. we hope that one of the youths will say, to that, we said, Shalom. Shalom. Okay. IUIC Philadelphia was invited to a youth violence seminar at a rec center. All praise to the Most High for being able to spread the gospel in Delaware. All right, let's I think we're going back to the Bronx now. To show you history out the Bible along with historical books. Where do we find Jews? In Queens, in the Bronx, in DR, in Brooklyn, in Harlem, in Chicago. The Jews are sagging their pants. The Jews are bloods and crips. Those are the Jews, according to the Bible. Basically, what did they change their skin color? What did they say they were? I'm giving you scriptures where they address their color. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourneth and negates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. This is the family that Christ came from. Because it's like old English. Yeah. Let's go to the NIV. Do the mourns. Her cities languish. They wail for the land. So it says they, okay. And a cry goes up from Jerusalem. What, what, what happened to the skin color of the Jews? <laughs> well, guess what? With those modern words, these scriptures I'm showing you, they took black. I was called nigger. Read it again. <laughs> now they were in the church that was at Antioch. So this is Acts 13, verse 1. Come on, spell it. N-I-G-E-R. In slavery, it became N-I-G-G-E-R. We not play it. We are going to educate the world to know who are the real Jews. All right, all right, all right. Notes were taken, minds were clicking, and a classroom was edified on the importance of true black history and iconoclasm. With IUIC New York's prophets guiding the conversation, a, co a college classroom was shocked and enlightened by biblical truth. All praises to the Most High. Make sure you watch the full discussion on IUIC Bronx Camp, Camp YouTube channel. Subscribe to the Brooklyn Camp, Queens, Harlem, and Mark Mount Vernon Camp on YouTube. All praise to the Most High. All right. Coming up, um, March 25th, sundown to 26th, is the New Moon <laughs> Feast. Make sure your seat isn't empty. Remember, the New Moon, congregating for the New Moon is a law, is not a suggestion. All right. What we got next? All right. I hope y'all ready. The Lord's Passover, April 8th, sundown to 8th. 14th sundown. The 8th and the 14th are Sabbaths. All right, we are seeking your assistance to enhance our national, our national broadcast. Kindly spare a minute to provide feedback by answering five brief questions. Thank you for your time. So let's make sure let's scan that, give some feedback on the class.
All right, all right, all right. All right, now let's hear from the IUIC Philly camp. A53. Hey, this is how you ask you feel it. Hit the QR code right now. Hey, sir. QR code, subscribe to our channel. Oh, hey, hit the QR, man. Hey, Shalom, scan that QR code down there. Make sure you scan that QR code and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Shalom, family, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that QR code. Yeah, let's build it. Hit the QR code. Make sure y'all scan that QR code. Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. What are you waiting for? Scan that QR code. Hey, what y'all waiting for? Scan the QR code. Scan the QR code. You heard it from the leaders and family of IUIC Philly. Hit the QR code now. Put the code back up. Put it back up. Scan the code. And subscribe to all social media, ch media channels to get the latest content from the prophets of IUIC Philly. So pull out your, your phones. Scan the code and subscribe. Yeah, pull your phone out. You, you, take it out. The whole phone, scan the code. All right, let's get to the Booster Club. Hey, put your hands together for the Booster Club right now. Put your hands together for the Booster Club. All right, join or donate to the Booster Club today. Send an email to iurc.fundraising at israelunite.org, right? The Booster Club gets us, from, gets us all over the world to bring the truth to our people. All right, let's go to Isaiah 1111. shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Subscribe now to IUIC Diaspora on all social media platforms to push the word of God and awake the dry bones scattered abroad. Twelve tribes. That's all right. praises. All praise. I love we got a couple more. All right, let's get the Nassau Bahamas. Hey, shalom, shalom. Israel Most High in Christ. Bless. We are on a small island of Cat Island in the Bahamas. Very small island, about 1,500 or so people. We come here to do the work. We come to reach any and everybody that we can. Come over here and teach the truth about who they are according to the Bible. So, Most High in Christ. Bless. A lot of people have not heard the truth about uh, the true color or the true image of Christ. They have not learned that they are the Israelites, but they're going to hear it today.
Now, from the Bahamas to the Cat Island, the prophets of IUIC, Nassau, Bahamas, broke ground in Cat Island. The true gospel of the black Messiah went out, and the mission was a success. All praises to the Most High. All right, let's go to Guyana. Time Christ bless. Shalom y'all. Officer Zariah here. We just completed our mission in Region 8, Madia. We did camp up here. We did a flyer mission likewise. We had the brothers spread out in the different um, streets and villages, meeting the people on foot, giving them the gospel, okay? A lot of our young girls are being human trafficked. Sex slaves, it's still going on today. We're gonna be back here in Madia because the work never stops. That's Shalom. right. Shalom. Christ bless. The prophets of Guyana venture hundreds of miles through dangerous terrains and across seas to preach against human trafficking, prostitution, and other atrocities prevalent to the region 8 Mahida. The word went out and won't be in vain. All praises to the Most High. All right, let's bring up, let's bring up the Men's Conference 2024. Y'all ready? I am always with you. Y'all ready? <laughs> I am always worthy of greatness. For greatness is within me. Greatness is within me. Greatness belongs to me. Greatness belongs to me. I hate to be oppressed. I want rulership. God knows I'm asking. I want to rule. We have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. And it is because of our effort toward getting straight to the root that people oftentimes think we are dealing in hate. All right, all right, let's go. All right, it's getting close to that time again. Men's Conference 2024. Registration is now open. Early bird special going on right now. Get registered ASAP. All right, let's go to the royalty films. All right, visit royaltyfilms.com and support by clicking the donate button at the top right. All right, Little Lights casting call. All right, pre please reach out to your local IT lead for the link to sign up. All right, let's go to Journey to Freedom. All right, premiering tonight on Original Roy Recordings, the first video release, Journey to Freedom, featuring the pen and as arrived from the studio album, Journey to Freedom. Let's play that. One, two, three, four.
on me on this spiritual journey back home brothers all right all right all right hey you gotta watch it yourself you gotta go watch it yourself all right what's next you're going to the curse of mary Hey, run it back. Let's play a little bit more.
praise to the most high. Hey, original royalty is on fire right now. The Curse of Miriam soundtrack is available on OriginalRoyalty.com. All fun. Testing, will- test. Uh, so that song, I mean, Dick and Isaac called me about that. Ha Adawan is the Lord. That's what she's saying, the Lord. That's the title of the song. And when she's saying, Abanawa, that's our father. Our- ah! The AC's messing me up. Our father. But anyway, y'all, I'll give you that words when I, I'll get Isaac to get the, li- the list for me. All right, all praise. It was good. All right. All right, make sure you go to OriginalRoyalty.com to pick that up. The Curse of Miriam soundtrack is now available. All funds will go toward the next short film. All right, let's go. We got some more Original Royalty. Check this out. Hey, hon. What are you doing? What's up? What's up? No. Looking at... Hey, check this out. Look. Oh, wow. That's before Kanai was even born. So many years ago. Time has... Just gone. Yeah, yeah, time fly, huh? Time is flying. Yeah, check them out. Oh, look, look at them as babies. Oh, man. Years went by so fast. So fast. Yeah. Gee, I need to burn the fat. Look at this right here. Look at that. Yeah. But you still look good now. You better know. I pay these bills. <laughs> <laughs> Take a seat. Sit down. Let's go to these school. If you want to go back or chat the run. So Remember when we were young, it was me, it was you, a separate boat, was a love, it was pure, it was true, with no kids and with no bills, with no house and with no hills, with no white pick a fence, I was checking you a drill, now we grow, we All right, that's all you get, that's all you get, that's all you get. All right, this is a sneak peek. A sneak peek for the next single on Journey to Freedom album. Hey, you got hey, 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 you gotta get it. You gotta get that thing. That's all you get. A sneak peek. <laughs> hey, all praises to the most high. So I know everybody getting that album, right? All right, all praises to the most high. I think that's the end of the announcements. Oh, we got one more announcement. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, scan me and follow us. IUIC, uh, Atlanta Burning 2.0. The new YouTube channel. Make sure you scan it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow. So pull your phone out. Scan the code. It ain't working. Womp, 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 womp. All right, let us break bread. <laughs> Ready? First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we say, Amen.
All right, Israel, let's rise up. Let's get the Lord another round of applause for that fire class from Elder Mr. Nathaniel. Men Israel, are you ready? Are you ready? What time is it? What time is it? Who's the king? Who's the king? What color is he? What color is he? Who are we? Who are we? Twelve tribes? Twelve tribes? Unity! 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 Never give up! Never give up! Never give up! Now finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. His what? His what? His what? His what? His what?